challenges to national and resiliency. I am Dr. Maria Esterlita Uy, currently the Vice Chair of the PNHRS Resource Mobilization Committee, and I will be your MC for this event. So later on, we will be joined by our Research Mobilization Committee Chair, Dr. Jaime Galvestan, to moderate the discussion during the open forum part of the program. So before we start with our esteemed guest presentations, may I g first give you a brief background about the PNHRS Resource Mobilization Committee and objectives of this session entitled, Strengthening the Philippine National Health Research System Through Research Mobilization. So about the PNHRS Resource Mobilization Committee, uh, this committee provides policy and technical advice in securing sustainable financing and ensuring equitable distribution and effective and efficient use of resources for health research and development. The committee is composed of representatives from the implementing institutions, private sector, government and international partners, and regional offices. So later on, we will be hearing presentations from representatives of our partner institutions. So now this session, strengthening the PNHRS through resource mobilization, will focus on presenting existing health research resources and discuss how these mentioned resources may be accessed and secured on a sustained basis. This is to strengthen research resources mobilization and create partnerships in the region and within the PNHRS. So to formally open our event, we would like to call on the chair of the Philippine National Health Research System ResMob Committee. Now he was, a, he was previously a professor of the University of the Philippines College of Medicine and the president of Health Futures Foundation Incorporation. He was Vice Chancellor for Research of the University of the Philippines, Manila, and Executive Director of the National Institutes of Health, Philippines, from 2002 to 2005. He served the Philippine Department of Health as Secretary in 1995 and as Undersecretary and Chief of Staff from 1992 to 1994. His expertise is rare, a combination of solid grassroots community work, national health policy development, private sector health business development, research management, and local government health development. He has also worked with NGOs, international development agencies, the academe, and the government agencies. So without further ado, let us now welcome Dr. Jaime Galvestan. Thank you, Tina. Magandang magandang umaga po sa inyo lahat. Good morning. Mayap aabak na imbag na bigat ka da kanyo. Amen. And then kung meron mga, ayan, alam ko meron taga Visayas Mindanao. Mayong buntag, mayong aga, maupay na aga. Thank you so much for joining this particular session um, in terms of let me just click nga raw. <laughs> Yung unang-unang slide. Anyway, I've always been advocating. Before 2013, it was really raising money. No? But now it's, we, have, we are awash with cash, literally, in case you're not yet aware. <laughs> but uh, how to spend, because we have been underspending. Underspending, okay. So, um, as you very well know, you were all part of the Philippine National Health Research System, the PNHRS created also in 2013, the Integrated National Framework for Health Research. Yeah? Almost at the same time when resources for health were being created by law through the sin taxes. So, okay. That uh, this is 10532, okay, just in case you want to 
go to the Lotto, 10, 5, 3, 2, 4, yun yung number. <laughs> anyway, known as the Philippine National Health Research System. So it's a framework specifically aiming to improve the quality of life of Filipinos, ensuring health research addresses health system needs. Investments in health research yield the most benefits and availability of resources for health research are insured and sustained. Okay, so whereas before I was saying, I remember that even as vice chancellor for research, it was uh, really looking for where to get the money. Now that we have the money, it was quite interesting. Um, as I look at the resources not spent in billions of pesos, we have not been spending the money earmarked for health, no? and quite unfortunately. So I want you to be aware of this, and that's why we have a very good panel to tell us how we could spend the money wisely. Thank you. Next. Ah, so just, just to show you, you know, because of the syntax, which was passed in December 2012 and implemented collecting in 2013, you can just see this. You know, during my time when I was Secretary of Health, just think of it. Our budget was only five billion, five billion a year from 1992 to 95. Look at this, starting 2013, 53 billion, billion added. Of course, by that time, I think uh, the budget of health was already around 40 billion. But you can just imagine 40 plus 53 compared to a 5 billion budget way back, 92 to 95. And look at it now, just for you. Last, uh, well, 2021, last year, yes. 205 billion. But ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you, when I looked at the COA findings last year, 80, 80 billion unspent. 80. Wouldn't you have wished you had 1 billion of that 80 billion to dispense for your own sector? Think of it. Think of if it is where in... Uh, to Las Lunas, <laughs> or think of it if it were in biomedical engineering. Think of it of just, uh, just, well, for me, encouraging young scientists in grade 11 and 12 to really pursue their dreams to become scientists. Now we, we can no longer think of annual, but we can even now think of the next 10 years and that is truly a wash with cash. Ladies and gentlemen, please remember that the syntaxes always accumulate every year because our taxes for cigarettes and alcohol are so low compared to our Asian neighbors that every year this money will keep on increasing. The problem when I talk with Secretary Jokno Yes, your budget for health is increasing, but nobody is using it. So, we're all from the health sector here, I suppose. <laughs> That's why you're here. So, uh, I hope you will come out of this morning session inspired that we do have money, not only now, but for the next 40 years. Because as I studied all the countries around the world who have had syntaxes, uh, the plateau only comes after 40 years, but it keeps on increasing. Why does it plateau? Because all of the smokers have died. <laughs> Not really. When you look at Australia, uh, Germany, and Canada. No? So, but they have benefited 40 years. So just think of us. We're just 10 years. We still have 30 more years to dream about how we can have health research, health development research, you know, and think of the dream that we can have. Okay. By the way, I'd like to thank uh, Joanna. Joanna, 
kailangan ano eh, palakpakan po natin si Johan <laughs> for the, the great help ng ano po ano. Sorry, sorry, oops, naabanti ko, paano ang matras, gano'n. <laughs> sorry ah, yung ating, ayun, okay. So, what are there for our recommendations so that we will be able to move resources, no? talagang really mobilizing them before it was resource generation. You know? As of now, really, we don't really need to generate because the money is always there and it keeps on increasing. The critical thing is, hey, are we planning to use it? And shall we use it even if we plan? Because what I see is that it is planned, but it is unutilized. Unutilized. So from, from, from plan 1015, based on the annual reports, and thank you for Joanna also who did an intensive study on this for her thesis. Health, research and development al allocation has increased. There is no doubt about it. There is a need, however, to review if health, R&D funding increase also in percentage share of the total agency. Um, sad to say, I was looking at the report of the DOAs that the the funding has not, you know, um, incrementally also increased for research and development. The budget increased, but the budget for health and research were not increasing in the same manner as the syntaxes. Collaborative efforts within the system to implement sustained system fund flow monitoring. Templates, typologies in tracking health research resources may be developed. And I do encourage that in every region that we track this. Huh? Out of the many resources available, first within your own institutions, and what more uh, in the PNHRS system, remember that from CHED to DOH to the PCHRD, plus the international agencies here. Okay, another one is, uh, this is, uh, we hope to be successful, if not in 2023, but definitely <laughs> the target is by 2024. Ensure resource availability by lobbying for DBN to approve a GAA item, specifically for PNSR. Uh, PNHRS, Health and Research and Development. So that probably is the bureaucracy, probably is the way how you, we ask the money, that's why we are unable to spend it. So but uh, this is a thing that we would have to deal with, uh, finance, DBM, NEDA, um, later on in ensuring that there will be a budget line item. Uh, when the Interesting, the PNHRS and the syntax overpass almost on the same year. And I remember that I was lobbying that 2% of the syntax should always go to health research and development. And the, uh, as I mentioned earlier in my stories, uh, I got already the consent of the Secretary of Budget and Management and Finance at that time, this was uh, just to give credit to Secretary Butch Abad. Uh, but it was unfortunate that when we came to getting the, but he was telling me, get the, get the agreement of the Secretary of Health. Unfortunately, the Secretary of Health did not agree to have to be placed in the law. The automatic allocation of a 2% of every year of that same tax. So just imagine 2% now, uh, 200, <clears throat> 200 billion, diba? that would mean already 4 billion in our. Anyway, so this is why we're here, develop PNHRS partners engagement framework to increase the number of linkages partnerships with other funding institutions. Okay, I think hindi na akin to, no? Tama ba yun? <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, 
my main message, there are resources, we need to use it. Secondly, what, for me, I've been thinking about it, why is the money not moving? I was saying, I think that we have been, for the last 50 years, 1946 to, to 2013, or more than that, when you count that number, we were really in a poverty consciousness. Health, science and technology lagging bababa on funding. It was only when the sin taxes was passed na talagang dumami po because it was an exclusive tax for health. Pero ang isip po natin, kasi before 2013, ay sorry, wala tayong pera. Diba? Ano, tuklas luna, parang hindi ata natin kaya yan. Ay, mag-funding tayo ng biomedical engineer, mukhang hindi pwede. More scholars, more uh, PhDs. Wala tayong pera. Pero ngayon, yun ang poverty consciousness. Yun. Now, I think I'd like everyone to think of prosperity. We should be in the prosperity cycle. Our mind should be thinking prosperous. And I hope if each and every one of us here come out after this morning session listening to the experts on how we can be more prosperity. Prosperity, please. So this, I have two messages. We have money. We are awash with cash. We are guaranteed money for the next 30 years. Or more. But we need to change our mindset. Remove the poverty consciousness. Na health is the last priority. Science and technology, hindi mahalaga, hindi po. No? We are in a sector that is now in prosperity. Let us think prosperous. Let us be prosperous. Magandang, magandang umaga po sa inyo lahat. Thank you. Mabuhay po ang health and research. Maraming salamat po, Dr. Galvestan. Uh, we, have, we are two NIH research faculties here, si Dr. Hilton Lam and myself. And we were under Dr. Galvestan in, uh, when he was the executive director. He was talking about the syntax and how to go to the Congress to have it uh, parang approved. And I thought, uh, parang laking dream yun. Ah. Pero it seems like whatever Dr. Galvestan does, but it becomes a reality. No? So we're hopeful with this ResMob committee, with resource mobilization. He's been really working hard in reaching out to the different sectors to make sure to give us an idea of the opportunities that we have in, in research. So thank you, Hopo, Dr. Galvestan. So now let us start with the presentations of our identified health research resources. Our first presenter is one of our esteemed researchers, researchers from the field of biomedical engineering and health technologies. Professor Nilo T. Bugtai holds a Doctor of Philosophy in Manufacturing Engineering as a DOST Engineering and Science Education Program Scholar at Loughborough, or Loughborough uh, University in England, UK. He established the DLSU or the De La Salle University Institute of Biomedical Engineering and Health Technologies in 2018. From what I got from here, he, him, there were there are now only four uh, colleges offering this biomedical engineering course. And presently, he is the program leader of the newly designated DLSU. Uh, Institute of Biomedical Engineering and Health Technologies as a niche center in the region, or NICER. R&D Center in Medical Robotics by the DOST Science for Change Program. So with great pride, he is an LIF Fellow Philippines, one of the awardees of the prestigious Leaders in Innovation Fellowship in 2017 and represented the Philippines in the first batch of the LIF Advanced Program. Currently, he is the full professor of Manufacturing Engineering and Management of the De La Salle University, Manila, Philippines, and the founding director of the DLSU Institute of Biomedical Engineering and Health Technologies. So ladies and gentlemen, our colleague, 
Let's welcome uh, our colleague, Dr. Nilo T. Bugtay. Good morning, everyone. Haba naman ang ano doon. Pagtaas pa sa ano ko, sa sasabihin. Okay, so uh, thank you, uh, Doc Jimmy. Talaga kaabid pa na ko niya sa 774 na program, 9 o'clock. So hindi niya alam kahapon lang. Okay, so I would just like to have a disclaimer na lahat kong sasabihin does not really represent the uh, opinion of the whole opinion of La Salle and the PCHRD. So, and all our projects in IBET are funded by the DOST. So, oops, oops. Hira pala nito ah. Chinese kasi ito yun. Okay. Ano lang ah? Isa ito yung puro ka yun. Ito siya. Technology. Diba? Okay, so just to add what the introduction said, in 2021, we received the uh, approval of uh, additional of four, four or five projects worth around 120 million. So that's how the government is supporting our thesis project. So just to have this, our outline. So we are talking about capacity building. This is the answer of what uh, Joanna have told me. How are we going to increase the pool of our uh, health expert? So we know exactly what do you mean by capacity building. Training, training, training. But actually, there are very important things that we have to know about capacity training. So it's not only by doing the training and the workshop, but we have to see what are the, the things that we need to achieve at the end. So there are approaches, and many of those approaches are being done. Graduate and postgraduate training. So as of now, our institute sent four uh, PhD in biomedical engineering. And hopefully, three to four years, they will come back. But the studies also could be uh, what we call brain drain when they come back. Why? They don't find what they have studied about. So they will just go back after serving the payback period. Learning by doing. So we have several we have several so I will not discuss that in details but of course learning by doing again you can see this example done by different agencies in our government and to some extent they're successful this one okay they've been doing modules by modules people were involved exactly what we need to do and we have all of all these modules done by our health uh, researchers. All of this done. Even the PCHRD were a very specific uh, topic or field. Okay? Training the individuals has two approaches and benefits. You can see with a couple of research, then this kind of uh, what we call this, uh, activities could go into an extreme as you have uh, experience in your, in your unit or in your institution. And another is going to partner with different universities, locally or abroad. And we have done this. But sometimes, uh, because of exposure 
to a different environment, sometimes the people you have sent will look into where they are assigned. And after doing so many things, but it seems that they did not reach their expectation, we go. Uh, there are a lot of examples. A CN mission, different institution had been uh, having this collaboration. Newton Agham is very popular. I have so many friends now in the UK, and hopefully it will come back. <laughs> okay. Center of Excellence. So this one is something that uh, needs budget. And of course, it's very expensive to maintain a certain institution who have this level of Center of Excellence. But you need resources and to sustain it. Okay? And there are problems, of course, in capacity building. So it flows because individual training can result into brain drain, as, as I mentioned, because they're given an unsuitable environment of what they have learned. And of course, international partnerships are difficult to sustain because it's costly. And another study from Wong and Oi, they said that it is noted that the university always could provide all this training efficiently. However, the lack of terms of research, dissemination, and relying information to others. Ito yung problema na pag-usapan namin ni Yusik Gibara. You have a lot of research funded. What are your plans to disseminate it? Mahirap, di ba? Kasi ito another <laughs> fund to, to, to have a roadshow, di ba? So without an effective information network, sustainability is not achieved. Okay, ito yung ano ko, uh, pinaka big dream na yeah, gusto ko i-share siya inyo. So, there are things that we have to look at if we are going to to capacitate our health researchers. And I think everyone knows about it. So it entails good infrastructure. So ano yun? Topic agenda. Ano ba yung focus natin? So we have the NURA. We have the harmonized agenda for health. Diba? So ano pa? All those infrastructure that is needed to support the research in the institution. Ano sinabi ng mga, I went around 10, 10 regional office sa uh, consortium ng, ano, ng PCHRD. Kausap ko yung iba-ibang mga faculty. Ang sabi nila, Sir, walang infrastructure yung university namin. During the open forum, sagot ng mga university, paano ka maka-create ng infrastructure to support a research? Eh, wala nga nagsasubmit ng research. Diba? So, parang check in at night. So, how are you going to do it? And Doc Jimmy have said, may pera naman eh. So, you need to propose. Diba? Ang problema, sa regional pa lang, hindi na makapasapasa yung ano, proposal. Ilang beses na ako nagbibigay ng, ano, ng mga right shop, right shop for uh, winning grand proposal. Pero at the end, kasi one time ka lang nagpunta, how are you going to sustain it? Diba? Kung sabihin mo, o oh, sige, mag-zoom tayo. Ang sasabihin na, sir, we are wearing different hats. Nag-ano ako ngayon, nag-ano ako ngayon. Binibigyan ako ng trabaho. So, how can you do research? Diba? So, these are the things na, in reality, in different regions where the university wants to do research, other than faculty, the infrastructure is not there. So, siguro talaga, with the money that is available, we have to talk to the president. Kasi hindi ako believer na nanggaling sa baba. Dapat sa taas. Dapat sa taas. So, yun yun. The infrastructure should not be only in the government. Alam ko, yung government, for the past six years, I have seen how they are going. And they have achieved it to some extent. Ang daming mga testing center, ang daming mga 
centers are created sa DOST that can help our researchers. So that's one good infrastructure. The second one is the facility of funding. Dati, sabi walang fund yan kasi hindi yan para yun. Pero when we talk about funding, sabi, problem is not an issue now. Ang issue is the research agenda, meaning the topic. Kailangan align siya sa NURA. Diba? And you have the expert. Kasi yung isa ka doon, tinulungan ko, big project, ano na, so it's a program. May program sila, tapos may limang project. Wow, di ba? Natulungan ko sila paggawa ng proposal. Tapos ang tanong doon sa GC, you know, so, what's your track record? Uh, sir, ano kami ni Doc Bugtay? Ano kami? Shepherd kami ni Doc Bugtay. Hindi naman si Doc Bugtay. Ang layo niya, eh. dito sa Manila, kayo dito sa Radio 9. Di ba? Maganda na sana, pero wala pa rin. So, funding, as been mentioned, is not an issue now. Kailangan lang talaga marunong ka maggawa ng proposal. And that proposal is aligned to the National Research Agenda, which is the NURA. Third, collaboration. You cannot do it alone. That's the message. Kung gusto mo, ano, kasi one time nagpunta ako dito, starlock yata kami noon. Tapos I said, oh, we have this project, this project, blah, 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 blah. blah. Sir, bakit ka nakakuha ng ganong kalaki? Million, million. Is amin 500,000 lang. Sabi ko, ano pa yung ano mo, credential mo? Have you published? Have you done a small research that got an award? Sir, mag-umpisa pa lang ako. Then you start small. O, di tapos, di ba? So, importante, if you want to do research in health, Actually, yung, yung IBET started with a research group that I formed. So, 2016. So, nangyari na parang maganda result kasi all the people are like our project, blah, blah, blah. So, ang ano namin na, anong kasunod? So, we propose a program establishing the IBET nga, Institute of Biomedical Engineering. Pero, hindi namin akalain na ganito na kalaki. Ano lang namin, baka kakakuha tayo ng 10 million, okay na, di ba? Yung parang gano'n. So, the funding now is not that hard to get as long as you have to align it with the NURA. At saka, siyempre maganda. At saka, you have the track record. So, the collaboration, you need to collaborate with the experts or yung may track record. Hindi pwede na, pag-umpisa pa lang kami, so, gabitin ko yung pera para matuto kami. Hindi pwede yan eh. Kasi the money is coming from tax peoples. Diba? So, kailangan accountable kanyan in every peso. Diba? So, bawal yun na i-discontinue lang. Kasi yung kasama ko sa research, sir, nag, ano kasi, yung project lead namin, umalis. Na-pirate. O nagpunta na abroad. Walang ganun na yun, diba? So, you need really to collaborate with the right people as well as when you have that research, kailangan meron kang network to disseminate para more people to collaborate the better. Ito, dinaglago lang to sa from the source that I got. Mindset. Dati, ito yung pinakaano namin. Ano ba yung problema, Doc? Pwede namin isosolve yan. Engineer kami. So we have to collaborate para mas hobby, ma-improve yung process, ma-improve yung device design. Ngayon, tanong mo si Yusik Gibara. Sabi niya, is there a market? Is there a market for that? So, secondary na yung ano, yung problem ng isang isang device. You need to establish that there is a market. Kasi, tama naman, kung bigyan ka ng multi-million research, para lang ba sa publication mo, promotion mo, world ranking mo, no way. Diba? So, you have to bring it from bench, lab bench, to patient bedside or 
to the clinic. Mayroon na tayong translational research na tinatawag na hindi lang pwede na parang sa promotion or para lang sa ano natin, improvement within. Kailangan pupunta yan. Pero, ito yung pinakamahirap. Bago magamit, kahit ano kaganda yan, kung walang FDA approved, matay rin. Diba? Dito kami sa masakit ng ulo. Kasi even with the RIB ethics, nako, tatlong taon yata kami nag-antay noon para ma-approve yung protocol namin. So, ganun kahirap. But, this is the problem. And we have to know how to go about it. Ang dami nga tinignan namin, oh. 15K root. Ibig sabihin, kung meron ka lang substantially equivalent ano, uh, device sa market, pwede mo nang gamitin. So, we will argue na hindi na pwedeng mag, ano, mag uh, clinical trials kasi mayroon na. Pero hindi pwede dito. Kailangan Pilipino data ang kailangan nila. So, wala kang magawa. Okay. So, ito yon. Ito yung isang nakikita ko na solusyon. We started in 2016 and now we are mag-seven year kami this coming August. Actually. Ano? March. So, seven years na kami. Ang nakita namin problema is that patsi-patsi yung ano, pag-cooperate. Last Saturday, I was also a guest speaker of the Philippine Society of General Surgeons. These are 5,000 strong members na doon sa EDSA, Shangri-La. Siguro sa Grand Ballroom nila, mga 1-5 yung nandoon. I presented this at our institute. Ang daming doktor lumapit after kasi they are innovators. Sabi, ito yung hinahanap namin, Dok. Paano ba? Paano? Sabado yun. Last Sunday, there was the G20 hosted by the University of Indonesia. They are crafting the the, what do you call this? Yung policy on how industry, uh, medtech industry, and health resilience in the ASEAN integration. And I was in the focus group of the industry, yung ano nga. And we have the policy brief on Sunday na pinipresent na sa ano. And pari-pari na problema pala natin sa Malaysia, sa Indonesia. So hindi tayo nag-iisa. Ang pinaka ano doon strong is mistrust. Bakit yung advisor ko doon sa UK? So you can look at anything in the bookstore and get it. Just charge to my account. Dito mag-request ka, tatlo, anim na buwan, di pa makarating kasi dami ipiperma, dami mag-evaluate. Why can we not do that? Pumapasok naman sa lasal eh, o pumapasok sa institution ko, pero doon sa account ko. Bakit kailangan pa yung mga bureaucracy? Alam mo, pag-propose ko sa IBED, sinabi ko sa admin administration, I want that to be a foundation para malayo sa mga ano, foundation. Sinabihan ako, sigurado ka ba? Nasuportan ka ng DOST. Sigurado ka ba? Nakakuha ka ng pera pang gastos na kanon mo. No, I will do my best. Sa ilang huwag-huwag. So, baka ba eh, next year kukunin ko na talaga, ilagay ko na sa labas para all those things. Okay? So, it is the LaSalle Biomedical Science Park inspired by our neighbor, Taiwan, Singapore. And they are very successful in this. Very successful in this. Okay? So, kita mo, there are a lot of partners. You cannot do it alone. You cannot do it only by two, by three, by four collaborators, the better the many. So, ang nakikita, this is just a concept, hindi pa taga exactong proposal, but we know exactly who the DOST. So, mayroong ano yan, apat na centers. So, maybe, I bet, 
will be the R&D. Then the R&D would provide training, so mayroong academic professional development. Because yung ECE, even ECE, uh, mechanical, they put in now a specialization in the biomedical engineering in the program. So yung PRC, who governs the professional uh, mechanical at saka ECE, told them na kung mayroon na tayong graduates na under that specialist, karangang may mga professional monitoring group. So they are asking na pwede ba sa IBET, you uh, create a professional group. So we are now yan ako si Joanna nga na ipinasyon eh. Uh, Philippine Society of Biomedical Engineering. Para yung mga professional MEECE, they could join us para mano to. So that's one. The other one is hospital because you need a hospital if you do research in health. So, mag-create ka ba? Hindi na. Marami ng hospital eh. What you need is just a center that will lay us so on all of this hospital. Office lang. Okay? Then the third, ito yung pinakamasakit. Kasi kung engineer ka, siyempre, ano mo lang technical. The business side is so hard to, to learn. Sabi ko nga kay Karen eh, eh pwede kang makuha ng consultant on this. So ito yun, commercialization center involved from the start of the designing of your technology to become a product para talaga ma-market. Pinatay mo yata. Okay, so the operation team. Oops. So we have that idea na kailangan talaga different teams will work out on this and the commercialization center will be in place kasi once you be brought into the let's say sa hospital kailangan talaga yan is fully approved by FDA okay so ito yon 2020 wala kaming ginawa kasi puro lockdown lockdown so ang sabi namin we are now soliciting a five story building kasi ang nakita namin ang increase ng proposal sa kanila DOC naman wala namang tigil pag approve approve eh. so sabi namin baka hindi na kaya hindi na kakasya sa isang floor doon sa building na bago doon sa Laguna. So, we have a fundraising to find, ano, parang donor endowment fund. Last June, may nagbulong sa akin. Sir, may magdo-donate kasi sob siya sa idea mo na magkaroon ng building yung ano natin, Institute of Biomedical Engineering. Tapos, yan lang ako. So, what's next? Ako, teka, teka. Gusto mong next? Ito yung biomedical science park. So with that, nakita mo na ito pa yung mga building sa Laguna. But it is in the Pesal. The Laguna Campus of Lasal has, uh, no, it's 54 hectares. Mayroon kami 10 hectares na uh, designated as a PESA. Alam mo lang yung PESA, di ba? Pilipilikan ang episode niyan. So nandito yun sa yung X. We, we say as the Dahan mo na, ilagay doon para mano. And of course, the ecosystem will be built. Diba? Then, the innovation will be there. And it will be having all of these centers working together to a holistic approach of all the research from knowledge, technology, and product. Okay? This is our timeline. Hopefully, we can achieve that. And what's the collaborators? These are target. Many of them, mga ito lang huli, Taiwan, hindi pa nakakolaborate. But we have a meeting this Friday, Meiko Teiko and Yusik uh, Pita Aldaba, this Friday. And what's the benefits? We have research advancement, holistically approached. 
Ayan, the answer of the how we increase our pool of research, health, health researcher is to have this capacity to build in. Not just patchy patchy, but a pool. So with that, I would like to thank you for listening. And I hope that you can uh, help us to, to reach our big dream. Actually, sinabi ko na to kay Yusek Ibarra. And sabi na, alam mo ba, hindi mo pasahan mo na yan sa IBET. So just continue dreaming. Okay, dok. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you po, Dr. Nilo. It's very inspiring, no, being in a group of uh, scientists who are visionaries and movers of the in the research, ano, no, in the research world. So, thank you, Dr. Nilo. So, the next presentation will discuss now how to establish research centers and laboratories for health research. The program leader of CLSU, Tuklas Lunas, Professor Dr. Reyes is also the Vice President for Academic Affairs and Concurrent Director of International Affairs Office of the Central Luzon State University. Professor Dr. Reyes has written 146 journal articles, four books on mushroom science, four chapters in a book, and seven utility models on mushroom science and biotechnology. His recent awards are the following the 2022 SEA RCA Professorial Lecture Award, the 2021 Outstanding Filipino JSPS Fellow, 2020 JSPS Bridge Fellowship Award, and the 2019 Crop Science Society of the Philippines Incorporation Achievement Award in Teaching. So to discuss about the CLSU's journey to drug discovery, let us give a warm welcome to Professor Dr. Renato G. Reyes. Okay, maraming salamat. Uh, magandang umaga sa ating former Secretary in the Department of Health, yung Regional Director ng DOST, uh, kaibigan ko si Dr. Uh, Gilo Cesar Sikat. Uh, sa mga nandito ngayon, ngayong umaga, isang magandang umaga sa ating lahat, uh, Mayap Aabak Ke Kayungan. Kapampangan po ako. Okay, so I'm here just basically to share with you our experiences with regards to the, uh, to the Central Sun State University's Tuklas Luna Center. Uh, I'll tell you the story and uh, my intention is really not uh, to deliver a lecture, but basically to at least motivate you and in a way inspire you uh, based of, of course from our humble beginning as uh, young Tuklas Luna Center. I am, by the way, I am a mycologist uh, by, by profession. I earned my PhD from Tokyo University of Agriculture just like with Dr. Sikat. I'm a Japanese government scholar but I did also my postdoctoral fellowship in the Michigan State University as a Fulbright scholar as well as in Germany as an Invent Fellow. Okay, basically all on mushroom. I would like to emphasize here all on mushroom because as a scientist, we really have to focus our attention on our discipline in order to come up with a deeper understanding in order that when we share something to our fellow, at least they will believe in us. We just have to collaborate with others. I also would like to, of course, to second the statement of the former secretary as well as the lecturer a while ago, the resource speaker a while ago, that indeed we have to collaborate. Because collaboration is very important because that's where we can actually exchange information as well as exchange expertise in order that we can address the problem. Okay, so it's a university, CLSU is a university where excellent service to humanity is our commitment. I would like to introduce the Central Luzon State Univers University as an agriculture university. Uh, the Commission on Higher Education designated six of excellence. These are, of course, agriculture, agricultural and biosystem engineering, biology, uh, fisheries, teacher education, as well as veterinary science and medicine. Uh, there are nine colleges with one distance uh, open as well as transnational university. This one is very relevant nowadays. 
Now, uh, of course, in order to strengthen curricular programs and in order to be relevant to the community, when I say community, culture where we have scientists there, uh, scientists on crops, scientists on small ruminants, uh, scientists on farm resources, as well as food technology. I suppose everybody already have heard of, uh, has heard of uh, the tilapia ice cream. That's where C CLS is known of. Uh, the digital and smart farming, the Precision Digital Agriculture Center is located in the Central Sun State University where you, went, you would see that a farmer is no longer in the field, is already in the house, but managing the farm, like uh, providing irrigation to the farm, even inside the house. That's digital and smart farming. We have the rapid diagnostic kit. The College of Veterinary Science and Medicine developed this rapid diagnostic kit, particularly for ASF, African Swine Fever. Biodiversity research, mushroom science, and biotechnology were actually uh, into this field nanotechnology, as well as we should not forget the local culture. Even in the midst of internationalization, we should always highlight our own culture. I always remember, and I keep on telling, that uh, even in the Filipino department, I always say that uh, we should always highlight Filipino as a language and as a culture in the midst of internationalization. In my case, I've learned how to speak Nihongo. I also learned some Deutsch, but still I could not forget the Kabampangan as well as the Tagalog and the Filipino as a language and culture because this is our vehicle when we go out of the country to, of course, tell something good about the Philippines. Now, establishing research centers, laboratories, the CLS took Las Lunas Research and Development Center experience. I would like to dwell on these four important factors. The first one is needs identification. What is your strength? Or if not, if you don't have yet strength, what is the potential strength? where you can actually dwell and enrich this one. I'm emphasizing this one in the sense that if you don't realize this one, you just only do be du duplicating what others are doing. It's just a waste of resources. You just have to, to, to focus on your strength. For instance, I keep on saying when I go out, for example, when I mentor people, uh, we went to Bicol in our micro expedition. I told the Sibiswa people there, who happened to be one of the, one of the faculty there, was my former student. I told them, there is Mount Isarog there. Why don't you dwell on Mount Isarog? The Pampanga State Agriculture College, they have a very beautiful Mount Arayat. Would you expect CLSU people would go to Mount, Mara Mount Arayat to work on uh, researchable topics on Mount Arayat? PSAU is there. So similarly in Central Luzon, for instance, CLSU is here that will actually cater the needs of the Central Luzon people. And the, of course, the UP people would do their own thing. The other people from other regions would also do their own thing. But at least we are addressing the problems. The most important there is, thing there is we are addressing our problem. Okay, and of course, the human resources to build the team. This one is very important. Mentoring is very important. I would like to emphasize that mentoring is a process in order to ensure sustainability of what we have uh, started. I always emphasize as administrator, we are here not to build empires. We are here to build institution. We are here to, be, to ensure that the institution that we have built is stable. Because other administrators would think that they would like to stay in their office forever. It will not happen. But we have to provide legacy and ensure the legacy. Uh, that's why we have to mentor people. We have to mentor people in order to ensure sustainability. Otherwise, lahat ng nasimula, nalimbawa, we are very strong on mushroom science and biotech. If, let's say for example, I'm already bu very busy as Vice President for Academic Affairs and the concurrent Director of International Affairs Office, ito yung karinuang problema sa Pilipinas, di ba? Pag nag-aaral sa abroad, pagbalik mo, bibigyan ka ng administrative position, papatayin ang karir mo. If you do not know how to manage your time, mamamatay ang karir mo. That's why you need people. You, you, you see, you need people, the young generation. We have to mentor them and help them link. Help them link. Dun sa mga networks mo. I have a very strong network with the Japanese. My current project with JICA, it's a five-year project as well as with JIRCAS. My collaborators are my former classmates when I was at Tokyo University of Agriculture. They were the one who crafted the proposal. 
We just lobbied at JICA and presented the proposal. Now we got the five-year project, which started last year. Now this is no longer for me because in the next six to ten, seven years, I'll be retired. But it's going to sustain the young generation. That's why we are training them. We are training them. Sabi ko nga sa mga batang uh, napapunta sa Hapon para mag-PhD sa Tamagawa at saka sa Mie, the partner universities of CLS, yun sabi ko, kayo ang magtutuloy. That's why you have to come back. You have to come back. Just like I and uh, Dr. Sikat. Dr. Sikat went to Miyazaki University. I went to Tokyo. We were there. Kung tayo ay katulad ng mga hindi bumalik, no? Nasaan ang Mushroom Research sa Pilipinas? Wala sana tayong DOST Regional Secretary. Yung ibang kasama namin, hindi bumalik. Mga ang term ko, uh, hindi bumalik. Tapos pagtanda, saka bumabalik. Doon sa balik scientist. You see? I uh, even mentioned, may balik scientist ba dito? Nag yes, nagsasabi lang ako ng totoo. Kasi... Uh, kausap ko noon yung Secretary Padulina noon. Sir, sabi ko, anong gagawin ninyo para kami mga scholars, we were at the Philippine Embassy then in Tokyo, para babalik sa Pilipinas. Kasi pinag-aaral kami ng foreign government. Kaya pinag-aaral kami ng foreign government. Nakakagawa kami ng proposal. Kasi nagsulat ako ng proposal, sinabit sa JSPS, na approve. Kaya nagtuloy-tuloy yung PhD ko at saka postdoc. I didn't go back. Pero sabi ko, babalik ako, babalik ako. Because I've emphasized that to my professor because when I ask, when he asked me, what do you want to do, what, what research do you want to do here in my lab? And sabi ko sa kanya, simple. I want to do a research that may be beneficial to Filipinos. Para pagbalik ko from my Tokyo uh, journey, magiging relevant ako sa Pilipinas. I don't want to be culture shock from my own culture when I get back. Karaniwan kasi, yung mga, foreign, mga Filipino scholars who went out, for example, sa America, or even sa Europa, or sa Hapon, pagbalik, siyempre parang bumalik siya, na bahay kubo ang bahay, nagahanap ng microwave oven, nagahanap ng smart TV, naturalmente wala. Di ba? Hindi niya naisip na siya yung gagawa ng paraan Para makabili ng smart TV, makabili ng oven. So my point there is that there must be that connection. We must not be culture shocked by our own culture, but instead we have to live with the reality that indeed Philippines need, needs experts. And that's the very reason that you were sent out. Okay? Wala nga ang obligasyon ng Philippine government because pinag tayo ng Kapon. O ipinag kami ng Amerika, ng German government. But we went back. Okay? So, important ito. Available research facilities also is very important. But this is, you know, can be accessed to proposal. Hindi po pwedeng ibibigay na lang sa iyo ng gobyerno yung gamit. You have to prove to the government that indeed you are capable of doing research. That's why we need proposal. Ang problema lang... Uh, Mr. Secretary, alam niyo dito sa Pilipinas, karanasan din natin, pag nag-submit ka ng proposal, para kang nagsulat ng libro. Karanasan natin sa JSPS, two-page proposal na approve. Yung sa JICA proposal namin, na multi-million project, less than 10 page. Ten, less than 10 page proposal lang yan. Pero ang maganda sa Japanese, okay, sa Japanese, halos araw-araw may meeting. Halos araw-araw may meeting para pag-usapan yung 10 page na proposal because they are so detailed. Sa atin, gagawa ka ng napakakapal, tapos ipipresent mo sa, sa funding agency, ang feeling mo hindi ka scientist pagkatapos para bang ang bobo-bobo mo. Di ba? Karanasan na mga gumawa ng proposal. Di ba? Karanasan na mga gumawa ng proposal na ganun. Parang hinang-hina, nagpapalpitate ako pag magpipresent ng proposal. Just to get this, magkano million, ilang million lang ito. Pero this one is very vital, very important. Okay? Uh, sustained collaboration is very important. Collaboration is lifetime. Once you have established collaboration, you have to sustain it. Not basically for you, but for your institution and for the young generation. 
sila na yung ipupush mo. Okay, kayo na ang magtuloy niyan. Hindi po pwedeng katulad sa, sa academe, sasabihin ng mga matandang professor, ayoko na magtrabaho, matanda na ako. You're still breathing. You are the mentor. Okay, you are the mentor. Who's supposed really to mentor and ipapalunok kung baga si Darna, ipapalunok mo yung bato sa kanya. Pero mali, mamili ka ng lulunok. Okay, importante na mamimili ka ng lulunok. Okay, we started from that humble beginning. When we started this before I went to Japan, magkasama kami ni Director Sikat. He was still the provincial uh, director of DOST in Nueva Ecija. Di ba? We, we really go to the community, uh, reach out the community. Talagang tao kami sa komunidad na nagtuturo sa mga gustong mag-mushroom. Kaya nagpapasalamat ako kay uh, Dr. Julius dahil hanggang ngayon hindi niya binitiwan pa rin yung mushroom. Kasi naniniwala na mayroong mangyayari. When we started, uh, hirap pina pinakilala natin yung Plurotus Florida, Plurotus Arikadio, yung kabuting pumaypay. Pinakilala natin ito. Na halos hindi kilala. Ngayon kilalang kilala na. Why is that so? Hindi kasi natin binitiwan. Okay? Hindi kasi natin binitiwan even up to this time. Okay? We started. It was established in 1991. That's why it has a very long story. 1991, I was just a young faculty na talagang makikita mo ako kasi sa akin, when a biologist, sinong biologist dito? A biologist is someone who actually goes to the field, umaakit yan ng bundok, umaakit yan ay lumalangoy sa dagat, bumabalik sa lab. At nagsusulat, nagre-research. Bumabalik uli sa tao para iparating yung kanyang nalam. Hindi yung nakaupo lang. Okay, that's not a biologist. That's not a scientist. So, dapat mobile. Okay, lahat tayo lumalabas. Okay, uh, the CLSU Tuklas Lunas team, I'm so proud of this team because uh, because of, of uh, this is the result of mentoring. Uh, I, I did my postdoc in several universities abroad, but I told, I even when I had this uh, conversation with the executive director of Fulbright, I told Dr. Kunanan, Ma'am, I'm the first Fulbrighter in the College of Arts and Sciences because I was then the Dean of the College of Arts and Sciences. But eto ang sinisigurado ko sa iyo. Dadami kami. It happened. As a product of mentoring, we have to share what we have. If you, if you really believe in development, you should always believe, and always believe, that sharing is important. Okay? That sharing is important. That's why Dr. Undan is also a product of uh, a Japanese university and also earned his, uh, I mean, did his Fulbright Fellowship at Cornell University in the U.S. Now he is our molecular biologist. Ito ang sinasabi ko sa inyong, magrespetuhan tayo ng disiplina. Okay? Mushroom science and biotechnologist ako, industrial biotechnologist ako, Dr. Undan is a molecular biologist. Hindi ko gagawin ang gagawin mo, pero mag-uusap tayong dalawa. Patungkol sa isang topic. So at least I respect your discipline and you respect my discipline, but we can coexist. Okay? Uh, that, similarly with Dr. Ortinero, it's a product of a Japanese university uh, from uh, Kyoto University. So at least researcher din ito. Similarly with Dr. Kalau as well as Dr. De Leon, uh, Dr. Dulai, I'm so proud of this guy, a young guy uh, who is actually who was actually awarded the 2022 Out, Out, National Academy of Science and Technology's Outstanding Young Scientist. Yung connection niya ay mga dati kong connection. Halimbawa sa USDA. So, naipakilala. Importante kasi yung ipapakilala mo itong mga kasama mo para at least, wag kang matakot. Ang word ko dito, don't be insecure with the young generation. Don't even be insecure even with your peers. Kasi, pare-pareho tayo. Pare-pareho tayo. Okay? And then, ganun din sila, ating mga food technologists, si Venus Lagmay, si Dr. Recto, si Dr. Salazar. And the team is expanding. In fact, we are, we are, we are actually inviting other collaborators from other universities. For drug discovery research, we need pharmacists. A pharmacist scientists. We need this luminary. 
kailangan actually din namin ng medical doctor. Maganda sana yung mga medical doctors natin, hindi lang dun practicing doctors. Maganda, kailangan meron tayong mga scientist doctors. We need scientist doctors. Just like in developed countries, they have scientist doctors. And others, of course, kasama ni dito yung mga development communicators and even mga social scientists, psychologists, in order to create a more comprehensive approach in solving the problem. Uh, by the way, that, this is my laboratory, the Flora and Fauna Analytical and Diagnostic Lab that is apart from the Tuklas Luna Center. And uh, some of the equipment are actually housed in here. And I got this funding from the OSD Region 3, if you can still remember, the Gem Plasm Collection, where we cryobank, where we cryopreserve our cell lines of mushrooms. And now I also got this funding from the ABAR for the cryobanking of cell lines. That includes the cancer cells, and other types of cells. Okay, so dito nakalagay. Also, we need this bioassay laboratory. We have this bioassay laboratory. Ito, kailangan din namin ito. Kailangan din, sir, namin ito. Ano itong mga ito? Uh, sa animal experiment natin, laboratory animals, hirap na hirap kaming bumili. Unlike sa hapon, I went to Takasaka University of Health and Welfare. It's a medical university. Nagkanda ako ng animal experiment with my sensei, of course. Andaling kunin ng DBDB mice. Ang daling kunin ng mga spontaneously hypertensive rats. Dito sa Pilipinas, para magawa ng experiment. Dito sa Pilipinas, hirap na hirap ka. Wala kasing gumagawa. Imported pa from other countries, from China, from Hong Kong. Pagkatapos dito, pagod na pagod yung daga. Tapos saka mo isasubject, sasaksakan mo ng mga tinetest mong gamot. Bakit wala tayong breeder, wala tayong geneticist na pwedeng maggawa nito? Okay, ang ginagamit natin, yung mga binibili sa mga pet shops, nililinis lang natin. Ibig sabihin nililinis, pinapaanak natin para maging maayos ang generation. But if other countries can do that, why is it that we cannot do it? Okay, so yun ang isang nakikita kong kailangang i-address. Tapos ang mahal-mahal ng animal experiment. Kaya puro mga in vitro studies o kaya mga in silico trials. Eh, pwede kang gumawa ng ano, kasi merong process sa drug discovery, merong proseso bago makarating sa clinical trials. Di ba? Um, kay, ito yung sinabi ko sa inyo, kailangan yung umakyat. Kung kailangan yung umakyat ng bundok, sumisid sa dagat, para makahanap ng bagong discovery, you do it. Kami makita mo, kami nasa bundok, naghahanap ng mushroom. Kasi wala namang mushroom sa dagat. So, naghahanap kami ng mushroom with the young uh, faculty as well as young researchers. We really go out and talk with the people. The people are very good, very uh, rich. They, they are very good resources. Rich because they, are, they have so rich when it comes to experiences. Kaya nga meron tayo dun sa aspeto ng research na ginagawa namin, yung ethnomycology. As a scientist, we have to create that bridge. Kailangan ilapit natin yung sarili natin dun sa tao at makakakuha tayo ng magandang impormasyon para maresolba kahit na paano ang problema nila at may balik natin sa kanila. That is the idea why we need to do that. Okay? And then of course, the young generations are being mentored. Uh, Mark will be going to Mia University this uh, September to pursue his PhD. He, who was my former undergraduate research advisee, but he did his master's at CLSU and we took him as, his, as one of our research assistants and he's actually rescuing cell lines of mushrooms. Uh, Kat also is a food technologist, napakasipag nitong batang ito, na talagang, kumbaga sa ano, training kasi importante yan. Kat, ang gusto natin mangyari ganito, but there must be constant communication. Huwag mong, hayaan mo siyang gumawa with your guidance. Huwag yung parang micromanagement na laging galing sa iyo. You let the ideas come out from the young generations because definitely there are good ideas. Okay? In order to create a good collaboration. So, nagpa-process, nagpa-formulate ng mushroom-based products uh, si Ms. Kat kasama yung ibang grupo sa food tech. And of course, our cell lines. It's good that we got this funding from the OST. That's why these cell lines are already cryo cryopreserved in our cryobank. Importante. Para 
at least hindi mawawala. Naalala ko nung 19, 1999, before my, I earned my PhD, I, I, I discovered this uh, giant mushroom in Pungkan, Karangla, Nueva Ecija after the earthquake in 1990, 1990. 1991, pumuto ka Mount Pinatubo, di ba? I discovered Culibia Renakiana, the giant mushroom, yung pinakamalaking kabute, okay, dito sa Pilipinas. Kung hindi ito na-rescue, because of injudicious collection and change of habitat, perhaps due to climate change, you go to Karanglan, hindi mo na makikita itong mushroom na ito. But it's good that we were able to rescue it. And I'm so proud of this one. This, it's part of my JSPS postdoctoral fellowship. You own to develop production technology, part of the conservation efforts for this Colibia Reina Kiana. And then, ang daming mushrooms sa Pilipinas. Our country as a tropical country, is very rich with mycogenetic resources. Ang isang challenge na lang namin, gusto ko, sabi ko, pumunta kasi yung mayor ng Sulu sa CLSU, sabi ko, gusto kong makita ang Sulu, hindi makita yung lugar, gusto kong makita yung mycogenetic resources bago mawala. Or even in the Visayas. Ang challenge lang sa atin yung security. Yun lang ang challenge. Pero, ang nakikita ko dito, what the best approach is of course, to contact faculty members from that area and then collaborate with us. Yun ang nakikita kong ano. Because they know, kumbaga sa military, alam nila kung anong nangyayari. Kasi pag sinabak mo kami sa bundok, hindi ko alam kung anong terrain dito, kung ano yung mga hayop dito, kung ano yung mga halaman dito. Pero yung local mismo, siya yung gagawa dahil alam na niya kung saan ang pasikot-sikot dun sa lugar. That's why, again, collaboration is important. Huwag matatakot o huwag mahihiyang mag-collaborate. Yan ang lagi kong sinasabi sa mga partners natin, lalo na yung hindi pa ganun ka-develop. Because meron pa rin silang advantage. Okay? Ang dami. Ang, ang mga new reports uh, ng mushrooms sa Pilipinas, eto katulad nito. This is Plorotus jamor. When I was at Michigan State University, si Chris Wright, who is the uh, uh, owner of a company, the Isigro Mushrooms Incorporated, gave me a gift, Plurotus Jamor, that is pink in color, the American strain. I thought it's exotic, but only to find out that in the Philippines, in Ilocos as well as in Aurora, we have Plurotus Jamor. One is pink, one is white. Di mas maganda pa. In sa America, pink lang. Pero sa atin, we have the white strain, we have the pink strain. My point here is that meron tayo. Hindi lang kasi natin nahanap because we don't want to go out. We should go out. Okay, I mean when I say go out, hanapin natin. Punta tayo sa field or let's meet people. Okay? This is Plurotus jamor. This is Lentinus tigrinus. Hindi pa yan cultivated sa atin at wala pang produkto nito sa market. Hahayaan mo ba na ang Malaysian muna ang unang magre-report or ang Indonesian muna ang unang magre-report kasi posibleng merong ganyan sa kanila because tropical country din sila. It's good that we have initiated works on Lentinos. Dr. Ritz Milton Dulay work on the different Lentinos species, Philippine Lentinos species. So at least we were able to domesticate this species of mushroom. Hindi na siya Kahit na mawala na yan sa nature, meron na tayong lahi na nakapreserve. At may ensure natin na maglalas na yan even for 50 years. Hindi mawawala. Ipopropagate na lang natin. Uh, we've written, uh, these are the newest book. The my fifth and sixth book. But this is a very good reference guide for those who would like to work on mushroom and those who would like really to engage themselves in mushroom hunting. Okay, kailangan kasi natin ng local references. Karamihan kasi sa mga references natin ay mga imported references. Merong Japanese, kailan nakasulat sa Nihongo, hindi maintindihan, makikipagkitaan ka lang sa drawing ay sa picture. Okay, American, na ang setting ay temperate sa atin tropical. We need this. These are products of researches. Okay? Uh, pictorial Guide on Mushrooms of Luzon, as well as Mushrooms in Luzon Island, Philippines. In the first book, I invited uh, 
uh, Professor Dawa Penjor of uh, a mycologist in Bhutan, as well as uh, my colleague in Indonesia, si Ivan, and then my professor at Tokyo University of Agriculture to edit this book. Kasi importante yung ma-edit. Para at least, uh, sabi ko nga, huwag tayong mahihiyang magpakritik. Huwag tayong mahihiyang magpakritik. Ako lagi kong sinasabi yan sa mga estudyante ko, huwag kayong mahihiyang pag pinapagalitan kayo ng mga professors nyo. Ang idea lang doon, i-emphasize lang sa inyo kung ano pa ang dapat na strengthen. Okay, yung iba kasi ayaw magpakritik. This is a negative, uh, I mean, negative trait, I would say. And of course, in the midst of pandemic, okay, in, this is the best time not to make mukmuk sa isang sulok. This is the best time to wake up. Diyan papasok yung resiliency natin. Lahat ng mga data namin sa Tuklas, during that, prior to the pandemic and during pandemic, sabi ko, siguro as academicians, we had to ventilate our findings to the international community. Hey, Filipino groups are, uh, group is doing this kind of research. That's also one way of uh, you know, sharing our resources to the entire community. Okay, that's why pinapublish natin yung work. Importante rin, yung usapan namin kanina ni Director Sikat, importante na yung research natin ay nagagamit ng industry. But we have to do it right. How will you do that right? You first have to protect that. You just have to protect that first by seeking intellectual property protection. And we did that during the time of pandemic again. Bagamat this is not our first utility models. Okay? Ang idea natin is para maging tama ang techno transfer. Naalala ko when I was in Germany uh, attending this fellowship on industrial biotechnology, modern industrial biotechnology that's anchored on microbiology. Ang sabi is, before you give it to the industry, your technology has to first be protected intellectually. Kasi madaling mawala, madaling makuha. Mawawala yung, I mean, yung who contributed this one is makakalimutan. Mga tao, bilang tao, ay madaling makalimot. Kaya kailangan nakasulat lahat. Okay? So, uh, at least protected itong mga ito. Tinulungan collaboration uli. Tinulungan tayo ng DOST TAPI. Through PCHRD, product ito ng PCR, PCHRD research natin, tapos tinulungan tayo ng TAPI para ayusin yung draft, yung claim. So it was TAPI that submitted this to IPOFIL. This IPOFIL para maprotektahan. Kaya alam mo ninyo, kung nag-iisa lang halimbawa ang CLSU, hindi magagawa ito. Kailangan natin ng ABLE and sustainable partners. At ito ay galing sa gobyerno. Okay? We have mushroom products. Ang gusto ko mangyari dito, bagamat ito ay challenging pa rin, kasi eight years pa lang kami as Tuklas Lunas, siyempre sa drug discovery, napakatagal nito. Napakatagal bago ka makakuha ng drug, bago ka makakuha ng isang produkto. Ang sasabihin natin, merong anti-diabetes, anti-diabetic, anti merong anti-hypertensive properties. Pero ang gusto ko dito is magkaroon ng science yung ginagawa ng ating mga industry players. There must be science into the art of what they are doing. Halimbawa, yung mga mushroom-based products, nagkalat na yan sa market, lalo na dito sa Pilipinas. Mga mushroom chips, mushroom kung ano-ano. But there's no science there. Because these are not products of research, eto lang ay produkto ng uh, kasanayan niyang gumawa. Kasi dati siya nagtitinda ng chicharon, gumawa siya ngayon. Kaya doon papasok ngayon yung link ng industry at ng academe. The experts are in the academe and the industry are the one making money and looking for money because they are the one in the market, directly in the market. Meron tayong mga furikake flakes. Gustong gusto ni Yusek Guevara itong furikake flakes. Uh, yung mushroom flakes ito. And then mushroom shingling na bake. And then of course meron tayong mga equipment. Ang CLSU to Class Lunas ay hindi pa naman ko kompleto, ganun ka kompleto, pero at least nakakagawa na tayo ng research. Nandyan na yung, of course, of, this one is basic. Meron na tayo yung sa cell-based assay lab, meron na tayong molecular biology lab, meron na tayo para sa in vitro assay lab, meron na tayo sa mushroom lab. So halos kompleto. Okay? That's why we are inviting partners. Those who are really serious. Kapag sinabi kung who are really serious, 
Hindi yung para lang makapag-produce ng paper, no. Ang gusto ko is yung gusto talagang sumunod sa yapak namin at mag-join sa team kasi sila ang magpapatuloy. Para madeklag, parang ginawa ng UP Diliman. Ang sabi ng UP Diliman through the PCHRD, kailangan ang CLSU makapacitate. Mag-training yung mga RA at yung mga project staff kasi masyado ng maraming ginagawa ang UP Diliman. So para madeklag siya, kailangan yung ibang tuklas lunas ay makapacitate. Kaya nga, uh, yung mga ano natin, yung mga uh, RA natin, yung mga project staff ay nag-undergo ng training, tapos merong constant communication sa kanila na dapat yung date, yung result na lumalabas sa kanila ay halos pareho ng result na lumalabas din sa CLSU kapag ginawa yung assay. Okay? Siyempre, hindi naman ito libre kasi merong mga consumables. Libre yung technical Uh, guidance, yun lang consumables yun. Okay? Hindi tayo nag-ooperate nag na parang negosyo kung hindi para lang masustain. Pero sabi ng PCHRD ay tutulungan tayo dito sa puntong ito. Okay? Para mag initially itong services na ino-offer ng CLSU uh, to Class Luna Center. And I hope na at least ngayon when we started ilan laan to Class Luna Center in the country Ngayon, marami ng Tuklas Luna Centers. Ang question na lang is, how to sustain that? The question is just only yung sustainability. So, one way of sustaining this is, of course, you build your team. Marami na dyang umalis, maraming buma merong bumabalik, marami yung nag stay Ganon talaga naman ang buhay. Hindi mo pwedeng pigilan yung isang tumakbo. kung gusto niyang tumakbo. Di ba? Yung umalis. Pero yung iba naman, bumabalik, umaalis. What is important is, buhay ang laboratory. I guess that ends my presentation. That ends my sharing of experiences to you. Maraming salamat sa inyo. Thank you. Maraming salamat po, Professor Reyes. Truly inspiring mor morning, no? We have the dreamers visionaries, innovators. So sabi po niya, collaborate, collaborate, collaborate. Sir, uh, actually, I have, my dad has cancer and undergoing chemotherapy and the oncologist always gives this additional mushroom capsules to increase the uh, immune system. And we have also parang somebody from China is giving us like 25,000 peso worth of bottle of mushrooms din po, sir. So, we hope uh, you can collaborate with our oncologists also in the different hospitals in the Philippines. So, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Reyes. Uh, next in our sharing would be on health research information will be Miss Christine Zamora. I first met her when she was still working in the ancillary uh, ancillary ano po, services of St. Luke's. And now she has changed path. She's now uh, with uh, is the vice chair for research mobilization of the Metro Manila Health Research Consortium, and she is the science research specialist too from the Philippine Council for Health Research and Development, working as part of the Herdin Plus team. No, so ladies and gentlemen, let us give her a round of applause. Let's welcome Miss Christine Samora. No problem po. Good morning everyone. To Director Sikat, umalis pala si Sir, to the PNHR Stress Mob Chair, Dr. Jaime Galvestan, Vice Chair, Dr. Uy, Dr. Renato Reyes, Dr. Nilo Bugtay, Ms. Karen Hipol, magandang umaga po. And to everyone, uh, I am Christine, I am from PCHRD. Um, I think na mix up lang po yung ano, hindi po. Ah, all right. Sige po. Oh, no problem po. So, thank you so much for the opportunity for, of inviting us to discuss uh, the... Can you... Uh, ay, sorry. That's some... Oops. So, to discuss um, a tool that can be used by the PNHRS ResMob Committee. So, okay po. So, this is the outline. So, I, I, earlier today, I saw one of the recommendations of, uh, as mentioned by Dr. Jaime Galvestan, 
is the development of typologies to track the resources of the PNHRS. And I think uh, this is one of the parang recommend uh, response of the PCHRD relevant to that. So there is a tool, I think all of us are, you know, and all, but uh, this is called the PNHRS Monitoring and Evaluation System using the system of Herding Plus. So it is a tool uh, for the monitoring and evaluation using the system of Herding. So these are the objectives of the tool. Number one is to, the tool aims to generate a comprehensive report on health and health-related research information from PNHRS implementing institutions, consortia member institutions, and research generating institutions. Another um, objective is to assist research institutions to organize and manage their research, that's health research information, and then to provide access or to improve access to health and health-related research information. But for this morning, I will uh, dwell on the, this objective, which is to generate a comprehensive report on the health and health-related research information for the PNHRS. So essentially, I think all of us are familiar with the RA10532, which brings us all together here in Clark for the celebration of the PNHRS week. So part of the PNHRS IRR, Chapter 3, Rule 28, states that all health researches shall be registered in the Philippine Health Research Registry and when published to the National Repository, which is her dean of published health researches. So we're just saying na ito po yung parang uh, yung legal mandate or the legitimate purpose of why we gather um, yung mga ipapakita po namin uh, later. Also, Section 14 of the PNHRS Act states that the regular monitoring and evaluation shall be done by the GC through the Secretariat to determine the accountabilities of the PNHRS. So all of this is anchored in the PNHRS strategy map, which will be soon, uh, siguro, re review kasi pa-end na po hanggang 2022. So I think all of us have seen this, so it's not the first time. So this is, ito po yung roadmap ng PNHRS. So there are eight strategic objectives, and nandyan po yung mission, I sorry, the mission, core values, and then uh, relevant in respect to the resource mob, since ito po yung ating session for this morning. Uh, we listed yung mga, based on the PNHRS scorecard, the different KPIs and strategic objectives na, na nakalagay po sa PNHRS monitoring and evaluation system, which can be used by the committee to gather, to track yung mga resources uh, the meron for the PNHRS. So, uh, basahin ko lang po yung different KPIs as listed in the PNHRS scorecard. That is to increase number of partners and collaborators, the amount or value contributed by implementing institutions, the amount or value contributed by consortia members, increase in national health R&D expenditure relative to the international benchmark, the increase in resources allocated by DOST, CHED, DOH, NURA, RURA. The resource generation targets achieved and the increased budget utilization by area by region. So ito po yung um, nakalagay sa ating PNHRS scorecard. So relevant to that, um, this is a screenshot of the PNHRS MNE. So this, ito po, are based on the different indicators that I showed earlier. So this is, ito po yung mga questions kung, that will be answered by the member institutions of the region, by the consortium, by our researchers. So, yan. So may mga questions po dyan about the services, service facilities for research, and the different resources na available sa mga institutions. 
And the budget, of course, um, this is also being asked in the tool. Uh, but if the committee have comments or we, we are open to hearing your feedback on how we can probably include indicators that are uh, specific to your needs. So, in po. so the PNHRS uh, m and &E, as we call it, that's the monitor aims the monitoring and evaluation aims to evaluate monitor and evaluate the PNHRS system performance so this will serve as inputs one of the inputs for the resource mobilization plans and programs and also to build and organize institutional research profile for for reporting and decision making so in light of that, since we are using the system of Herdin Plus, so meaning hindi po kami the create ng, ng separate na system for this, but we are using the system of Herdin Plus. These are some of our communication activities, advocacies to discuss or to share the system to different regions, consortium, partner institutions. So we have the orientations. Uh, herding, we call it the Herdin Plus Orientations. It, it aims to introduce the system to research generating institutions. We also have lear, uh, Herdin Plus Learning Sessions that is to build their confidence in terms of copyright law, open access, and data protection. And we also have the Herdin Plus Research Camp. Ito naman po yung, this, this aims to capacitate the institution to share, so to upload to input their research outputs which are which could answer the different indicators mentioned a while ago so that would be all thank you so much for your i know for your attention thank you thank you christina sorry for the confusion uh, uh i i always thought that uh, her deed would just be like a repository of the abstracts and the local papers but it seems like there are newer features of the herdin that uh, we can learn from no? so thank you for sharing the uh, your slides on the herdin plus so next is on building linkages with international partners to be presented by one of the rest mob committee members miss karen hipol so a senior trade manager for the uk department of for international trade Ms. Karen and Anne Hippol supports UK companies that are looking for commercial partners in the Philippines and in the Asia Pacific region, specifically in the sectors of education and aid funded businesses. So, Dr. Reyes, ito po si Karen. Pupuntahan natin. Her diverse background spans both government, academe, and business. She was consultant for the Philippine Department of Trade and Industry, Competitiveness and Innovation Group, involved in the strategic planning and implementation of the DTI's programs in innovation, competitiveness, collaborations, and startups. But before DTI, Ms. Hippol managed the Newton Agham program, having oversight on various activities which has built strong science and innovation linkages between the UK and the Philippines for long-term sustainable growth. She was formerly a consultant for the University of the Philippines Technology Transfer and Business Development Office, Associate Director of Carillion Partners and Chief Operating Officer of Hybridime Consulting. She was also a recipient of the British Chevening Scholarship for her studies at the University of Cambridge, taking the MPhil in Bioscience Enterprise. She received her degrees of Master's in Technology. <laughs> Technology Management and Bachelor of Science in Molecular Biology and Biotechnology. Mahirap yan, ha? From the University of the Philippines, Diliman. So, Karen, uh, welcome. Um, good morning, everyone. I hope you can see me and you can hear me. Uh, so, good morning to our colleagues from the OST. Uh, good morning, Dr. Tan. Good morning, Dr. Sikat. Uh, 
I am very, very grateful to have this opportunity this morning to share with you a little bit about, um, I guess, our experience and our perspectives, and maybe it could help you also in building linkages with international partners. So as mentioned, I am now working in the British Embassy as a senior trade manager, uh, mostly with the objective of building commercial links between the UK and the Philippines. But prior to this role, I was managing the Newton Agham program, also at the British Embassy, uh, focusing on linkages on science and innovation. So I hope today we have a few slides that can share a bit on uh, both. Okay, um, I want to start with this slide. I hope I'm doing this right. Matagal lang po ba mag-react? Okay, I want to start with this slide. So this slide shows us the different uh, sustainable development goals uh, from 1 to 17. And the goal is to achieve this in the next few more years. Actually, most of them have the goal of achieving them in 2030. And I am saying this right now because why are we talking about building links anyway, whether locally or internationally? So the way really for us to achieve all of the sustainable, sustainable development goals is to collaborate. And what better way to do it also with partners from other countries who would have expertise that would complement ours. Um, and since this is a health fora <laughs> or forum, um, I'd like to focus, of course, on the sustainable development goal three, which is to ensure healthy lives and promote well-being for all ages. So I will not read everything on the left side, but this is just basically a summary of the different um, sub-goals of the goal number three, Sustainable Development Goal for Health. Um, what I'd like to focus on, however, is what you can see on the right side. Uh, this is from a study on the role of international higher education partnerships in contributing to the Sustainable Development Goals. This was actually a study commissioned by um, the British Council and the Association of, uh, I have the name here. <laughs> That's why I have Codigo. The Association of Commonwealth Universities. Okay, so in this study, they looked and saw that at least for SDG3, um, the partnerships generally target specific health challenges relevant to their partner countries, such as human papilloma virus, tuberculosis, and malaria. Innovative capacity building in research and practice, as well as scaling up access to services are common goals as well. Okay, so again, this just shows us that, again, proving or emphasizing this point, um, our, our means to achieve the SDG goals in general, especially number three, is through um, international collaboration and collaboration in general. Um, I guess the, the phrase to highlight there is their partner countries. So by the Philippines or countries in the region working with other developed countries, in a way it also forces them to allocate the, their resources to focus on uh, research topics or priorities that are relevant to us or to our region. Okay, so I guess this is just more or less the same thing, but in different words. Why is it important uh, for us to build international linkages in our own institutions? First, it presents health researchers with opportunities to share experiences, data, methods that can provide the basis for new and important perspectives on existing practices. So this could be methods, protocols, even assumptions that we had. Uh, we realized na, oh, kapag iba pala yung climate, iba yung nangyayari, right? Or, oh, since we're using a different instrument, there's a different technicality to how to uh, do this procedure. So it brings us awareness for this. And this is not just us learning from them. It is also UK and other countries learning from us, um, especially us since we are very, very resourceful. Uh, we have found ways, for example, to streamline procedures or protocols, and they are made aware of that as well. Okay, this is also regarded by many as indicator of high quality research. So when you have, as you all know, different expertise working on a particular research project, there's a lot of, um, I guess, intellectual exchange, <laughs> which strengthens, strengthens, again, or complements each other's work. Therefore, there is a higher likelihood of getting um, high quality research. But again, uh, just to emphasize that with international projects or programs, the tendency is for us, therefore, to have high quality results. Mm. And as mentioned earlier, this helps us to address common healthcare problems through the pooling of resources. So it's not just our own research budget, although sabi ng Dr. Tan, medyo sobra sobra budget natin, hindi na utilize. But it's also, again, having others um, allocate their own resources 
okay, to also work on health priorities in our region or in our country. This is almost a mirror of the most, uh, of the most recent slide, but the last slide showed us the importance of international collaboration. This slide shows us how do we benefit, therefore, as a resource um, perspective or as a resource point. Uh, again, this forum is about how do we maximize resources for health. So first, um, when we have international links, we are able to uh, build or have mutual learning and capacity building. As mentioned earlier in Dr. Uh, Nilo's presentation, a lot of capacity building in terms of our personnel, our researcher, researchers are made possible through these projects. Okay. Um, since you are more likely <laughs> to produce high quality or high impact outcomes or research, this will also increase the reputation of your universities. Um, if you look at Q, uh, QNS rankings, actually one factor that they look at is the number of international collaborations or partnerships that you have as a university or as an institution. Okay, so it's an existing metric. Um, so this will increase your reputation and therefore it also leads to more funding opportunities in the future when you make further applications. Um, it gives us access to equipment and technology. I have a friend who said that there's a certain protocol when she does it in the Philippines, it will take her two weeks or maybe two months because you will order the reagents, it will take some time to arrive and then it will go through customs, whatever. It gets to you, you do the protocol, you wait for the results. Whereas when she did it in another country, two days, three days, one week, you can get the results. So can you imagine, uh, I guess, the kind of efficiency that you're also able to achieve if you collaborate with other countries, uh, with which again, hopefully we'll have less bureaucratic processes in the future. <laughs> uh, but again, it's one of the advantages that we can um, uh, look into. Okay, as mentioned also earlier, uh, one benefit is that we're able to channel uh, funding allocations to the priority agenda and health research topics relevant to us into the region. Uh, we mentioned earlier the Newton Fund program, which I used to handle. So for the Newton Fund program, it's UK money, specifically uh, set aside for research and innovation. But one criteria or one requirement for that funding was to do matched funding, okay? And matched funding was provided by our government partner, therefore DOST. <laughs> specifically for health, DOST, PCHRD. So which means that the Newton Agham programs had to run on priority programs or agreed uh, areas between the two funding agencies. So again, even if for example, UK wanted to fund something else completely different, let's say cardiovascular diseases, which is not uh, you know, a bad thing. But if we say hey, our priority is infectious diseases, so therefore they are in a way they have to allocate the resources to our priority uh, projects or programs. Okay, so I've, my last two slides basically were just telling us why is it important or why do we have to look into it? I hope you're convinced. I think you already know this anyway. Um, but having said that, if international collaboration is important, why aren't we doing it a lot? Or why don't we have a lot of it? So of course, this means there are certain challenges that we encounter. First, looking for potential partners. So you cannot just wake up one day and say, oh, I wanna collaborate. <laughs> and then you don't know where to look for a partner. Um, maybe in your in own institution as well, you can say, oh, uh, doc uh, or president uh, or chancellor, I think we need to have more international projects or programs. However, we realize that we have insufficient capacity um, to perhaps handle them um, in-house, okay? This could be because of little or no previous experience with international projects. We haven't done them before, so we're not very familiar on what we, should, what we need to do. Um, lack of internal processes and infrastructure that will support this. So for example, we need a MOU, MOA, okay, so will be, or there'll be someone who will review it. Um, in terms of intellectual property rights, are we familiar with the kinds of agreements that we can have? Um, so all of these things. Uh, maybe sometimes also technical and project management um, skills of staff. This is actually basic, but again, if you have an international, for example, research project, um, there might be, uh, what do you call this, different time zones or different people to collaborate with, many other partners. So you should also be very skilled in project management at the very least. Uh, lack of internal resources, especially when in-kind contributions are expected. For example, project assistant and secretariat, 
okay, I have a partner, but I don't have a person here or an, R or an RA who can focus on the project. So again, um, these are some of our limitations. Um, skills in grant management, um, including, for example, knowledge of financial rules. So that's also possible. Okay, another challenge, sustainability due to volatility of the funding environment. So for example, binangit ko kanina, Newton, Newton Agham program is actually dwindling down now at the moment. Uh, we're waiting for the UK government to announce what is the next uh, funding scheme or what will the next fund be called. But we also know that politically in the UK, do you record ba ako? It's not very... <laughs> Baka sabi na, British taga British Embassy to, bakit ganyan sinasabi niya? Mayroon, in the UK, it's not politically stable at the moment. Okay, so we can't... So, but all of these things have to settle down before we will know what the next research grants might look like. Um, but in the interim, between the new, end of the Newton Fund and our new funding scheme, what are we doing? Or what can we do uh, together? So again, if we only have short-term funding and nothing to fund in the middle, uh, the linkages that we have built okay, might be weakened or they might look for other partners. So there's that risk. Okay, and I guess related to that commitment of the partners as well. Okay, if you have a UK partner or a foreigner partner who's really keen to work in the Philippines, well and good. But we know that a lot of our counterparts in the region, Malaysians, Thai, <laughs> Vietnamese, very, very aggressive. They will travel themselves to other countries to look for potential partners. So mantalang tayo travel budget, medyo hirap, di ba? So we're really competing um, sometimes uh, with a lot of partners because they can also partner. Uh, with other researchers in the region. Okay, so these again, the next slide shows us maybe some opportunities that we can consider um, in addressing the challenges that I have just mentioned. Uh, first, looking for potential partners. Um, if we haven't had any exposure yet or any potential network, it's important for us to try to see if we can um, attend international forums or fora, do travel or exchanges with research institutions. This is really one of the, I guess, easier ways. Um, especially if you do exchanges like a one-month exchange, three-month exchange, you get to know the people and the institution. At the end of the day, it's still relationships that we're trying to build with our other um, counterparts in other countries. And what better way <laughs> to build friendships and therefore secure our research partnerships in the future. Okay, as well as further education and training abroad. If you look at the partnerships between the UK and the Philippines, most of it actually is with, uh, because we looked at the rankings, no? most of it is with the US, uh, Taiwan, <laughs> Japan, Australia, and then UK, okay? So UK is not actually there in the top three. But when we were looking at the reasons why, it's because most of our graduates, MS, PhD, are from these countries, correct? So again, it's one way for us to build our network of um, collaborators when we do further studies, whether it's MS, PhD, postdoc abroad. Okay, building capacity in-house. So if we say we'd like to do more international partnerships, therefore we should also try in our own institutions to build that internal capacity. Uh, maybe if we haven't had a lot of exposure yet, we can also build partners with other local institutions or consortia. I know many of you here are members of consortia, consortiums, so take advantage of that, um, especially if they have experience with international projects. Uh, build or streamline processes to support your own internal participation. Okay, again, if you need capacity building in legal or an RA assigned to it, um, technical and project management skills, allocation of other internal resources. Um, I mentioned earlier that sometimes there is a gap of funding. So you, we have to, as much as possible, try to consider diverse opportunities for funding um, from a variety of, uh, again, funding sources. And then aim for long-term mutual collaboration. Um, Dr. Nilo Kanina was mentioning it's a dream <laughs> what they're trying to achieve. Um, it's a bigger project, so it's not just like a small, not, not naman small, but sometimes uh, we can consider maybe a three-year research project, one-year research project, but why not yun nga, a whole <laughs> biomedical park, <laughs> right? So if you have a bigger um, dream in mind, we are able to um, aim for long-term mutual collaboration. When we talk to partners, we're not just enticing them to work with us for the next year or the next three years. We're asking them to be collaborators of, for example, a bigger park science or uh, research project program. Okay, engagement of senior leadership. It's really important, as in any project anyways, to have a champion 
in your institution who understands the relevance um, and the significance of international collaboration and therefore will uh, support the resources that you need, right, or the collaborations that you need uh, to do um, or initiate. Um, so involved, um, the partnerships tend to work more efficiently. Okay, we also, there's a, a study that also showed that not just internally, but international research collaborations are supported if there is flexibility of funders, donors, and fund managers. And uh, for this, I'd like to commend again DOST, who has worked with the UK government a lot for the Newton program, because there's been a lot of flexibility in the sense that, of course, uh, for example, the DOST has their own way to evaluate a project for review, for funding. The UK also has their own process, but uh, we have found a way to make this work in parallel and sometimes, um, you know, streamline the process, take away some of it and do it jointly. Um, and in that sense, again, not just the own institutions, but through the help of the policymakers and the funding institutions, we're able to facilitate international collaboration. Okay, I think I just have a few more slides left. Um, when we now have a partner or have identified a partner, it's important to establish common ground. Uh, again, just with any partnership, it's maybe to identify ways of working. Very basic, how often do you meet? Weekly ba, every two weeks, uh, every month, uh, earlier. Uh, it was also mentioned communication, <laughs> communication, communication. You cannot collaborate with a partner and just communicate at the start and at the end of the project. A lot of it has to be done um, during the entire project management cycle. Okay, managing conflict. There will always be conflict, I think. <laughs> Tayo kasi mga Filipinos, we want to avoid conflict, right? But um, I guess it's easier to realize that there will always be conflict. So we should find ways, even at the start, to agree with our partner. Ha, okay, if there is this result, what do we do? If we lack uh, funding or this happens, what are the other avenues we can consider? So it's easier to discuss um, how to manage risks before they happen um, rather than whilst they're happening. And of course, the partner and yourself might have different perspectives on this already. And uh, as mentioned earlier, maybe to have um, your memorandum of understandings or memorandum of agreements in place because this is something that you can also look back to uh, when you're doing your program and as you approach um, the implementation of your project. Okay, investment of the institution. This, or, this was already mentioned earlier. Uh, we realized that it will entail time um, and resources um, and commitment Okay, to maximize the opportunity of your institution in international collaboration. Okay, um, this is kind of basic, <laughs> but I think it's just worth uh, emphasizing again that in order for, us to st for collaboration to be sustainable, first we have to be able to form a collaborative structure, for example, a MOA for a research grant, perhaps, or again, a joint uh, venture for a, a research uh, project or building whatever it is so have that formal structure in place of course share information and share resources and skills in the process communicate as you as needed um, and it's most successful normally when there is multidisciplinary involvement so in your own institutions as well no don't just involve your department but involve the other departments that might be relevant to your project and again this ensures um, uh, as a more sustainable collaboration. In the end, we want to build equitable partnerships that are based on a shared vision, shared responsibilities, and are mutually beneficial in the longer term. Um, of course, some of us have had experiences in the past now where we feel that we might not be in an equitable partnership, uh, where we feel like, oh, they're just after our... <laughs> our you know natural resources and then they're not going to share the results with us but actually we've progressed a bit um through that phase and again there are ways to go around it and to go about it and we have a lot of skills actually here in, here in the philippines a lot of expertise and if we're able to of course also fight for what we think um is equitable for us this will be respected by our partners okay um last two slides i think so what are some other opportunities to build links? I mentioned that the Newton Fund is closing, has been closed. Um, we're just funding the legacy projects. When I say legacy, for example, it's a five-year project. Or we're just uh, continuing that until the natural end uh, of that particular project. 
we are now in discussion to build or to start the International Science Partnerships Fund, ISPF. That name might still change, but the UK has agreed that the Philippines will still be a partner country for this new fund. So, abangan na lang po natin what might be the results of that. Um, there are also possibilities to build transnational education programs. Okay, so partnerships are not just in research collaborations. Partnerships could be through joint degrees. So, for example, you can have a joint master's degree between your university and a UK university. Um, the British Council and CHED actually has been funding TNE partnerships, uh, and there's TNE capacity building also on both sides. Currently, we're, we have about 20 TNE partnerships for master's degrees. Wala pa tayo for bachelor degrees. But again, I'm explaining this because this is another way to build your international links by uh, exploring ways to do joint degrees together with potential partners. Um, okay, and then this website just link just shows us the funding opportunity. So these organizations, UKRI, Royal Society, Royal Academy of Engineering, <laughs> Universities UK, these are all actually Newton Fund partners. <laughs> but in the absence of a Newton Fund uh, at the moment, Newton Fund, but they have their own internal allocations for international partnerships. And again, you can um, look into this. Some of them will require a UK partner. Siyempre, kasi ka, UK, fund, ba? UK research funding siya. So if you don't have a UK partner yet, this will also be a way for you uh, to possibly fund some together with a UK organization. Uh, last two slides. For those of you who aren't familiar with the Newton Agham program, uh, we've, these are just some of the achievements. Uh, and this is just with the Philippines. And I just wanted to show this slide to emphasize that the Newton Agham program, or again, joint research, is one way to allocate other resources, when I say other resources, UK resources, to also work on projects relevant in the Philippines. And again, as mentioned in the first slide, if we do it collaboratively, we're able to achieve our um, research agenda. We're able to achieve what we want to do in terms of our sustainable development goals, okay? Not just by our own efforts alone, but with our other partners. So again, we've funded for health, 12 research grants, four for rice, uh, with Phil Rice actually, um, four on swine and poultry with a DA, so that's DA uh, Biotech and DA Bar, and then for hydromet hazards research, this was with um, t -shirt, um and the rest. But I wanted to focus on that because they were large scale research grants, mostly a spanning three year research. Um, again, with the aspiration of having high impact results at the end. Okay, these are two of our PCHRD co-funded projects in Newton. One was with Dr. Baha of UP Manila. Another one with, um, this is, well, it's uh, mentioned here as Ms. Uh, Lut Chavez, but she has a, it's part of a bigger team, team in RITM. So Dr. Baha's project was uh, HIV AIDS mobile game application in partnership with uh, UK Liverpool School of Tropical Medicine. And for RITM, for malaria surveillance, this was with London School of Hygiene Tropical Medicine. Uh, I know we'll share the slides anyways, but again, we see here some testimonies on what has worked with them uh, for their work uh, through the Newton Agham program. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much. Karen, so we're hoping to have some collaborations with the uh, UK in the future. So now we are very uh, fortunate to have the senior manager of the Philippine Health Insurance Corporation here with us this morning. Dr. Edwin M. Orinia, or Doc Ed, is uh, currently the senior manager of the Corporate Planning Department, or Corplan, of the Philippine Health Insurance Corporation, or PhilHealth. So core plan is responsible for developing and managing corporate strategic and business programs and plans, which includes the management of strategic and corporate policy research, program development, and special rules. So prior to Doc Ed's assignment to the strategic apex of PhilHealth, he was the PhilHealth Regional Vice President of PhilHealth Regional Office 4A in Lucena City and 7 in Cebu City. During his stint as regional VP of PRO 4A, they were awarded as model or star PRO in 2018. He was also the chief of the healthcare delivery management division of PRO 4A 
for more than nine years, which is responsible for ensuring the delivery of quality health care services in the National Health Insurance Program in the particular region. So, Doc Ed earned a master's degree in business administration or MBA from the International Academy for Management and Economics and Doctor of Medicine from our Lady of Fatima College of Medicine. So, ladies and gentlemen, let us welcome Dr. Edwin Orina. Good morning, Hi, good morning. Practice Kumuna. Okay. So I'm Dr. Orinya. Actually, I'm region from Region 4A, no? uh, uh, Laguna, Cavite, and Quezon Province. Also in Region 7, we have the Negros, uh, the Bohol area, the Dumaguete, and of course the Cebu City. There, medyo iba ang work ko, but I was asked uh, to lead the corporate planning. So totally a different sabihin natin different scenario yung yung from the operations for i think almost 22 years i was asked to then lead the corporate planning in uh, of course in passing so i'm still maybe three months old in a uh, corporate planning though Kung titignan natin historically, we go back to feel, uh, in field health. No, we go back 1995. Previously, 1995, it is just Medicare, and then 1995, field health through the efforts of Senator Angara, the, the old father, and then until 2014. So 2014, pababa. Kung titignan natin, there's no research. Hindi pa siya ganun kakilala. In field health, of course, in field health. So, kung titingnan natin siya, policies being made in field health is through the collaboration of the uh, healthcare policies, the persons, the doctors within field health. But started 2014, dun na pumasok yung tinatawag nating research dito sa field health, and we've collaborated with, of course, the DOST. PCHRD. And uh, lagi ko nga pong nakakausap si Doc Galvestan. Idol ko yan dati kasi former DOH. Uh, actually, nakapasok ako sa PhilHealth. Siya yung DOH noon. Uh, pero hindi po siya yung nagpasok sa akin, ha? <laughs> Linawin ko lang. Okay. So, so, lagi namin siya nakakausap. And through this, when I'm in... Um, shall we say, corporate planning, dun ko na pansin na we really have good and quality circulars. Though sabihin nga lang natin, we have quality circulars, but of course, the research, dun mo makikita yung research. It can be done before the circular, in the middle of the circular, or after the circular. So, dun natin nakikita. So, here we have the vision. Let a thousand papers on social health insurance and healthcare financing bloom in the Philippines. Sabi before, syntax. Kay, kay Doc Galbestan. Sabi niya yung syntax. And we are very thankful for that. When I'm uh, in the hospital, lagi kong sinasabi sa pasyente, tumigil na po kayo ng paninigarilyo. Wag na rin po kayong uminom ng ala. As I do myself, I don't drink and I, I don't do cigarettes. Pero nung napasok po ako sa PhilHealth, sinasabi ko na sa tao, please manigarilyo kayo. Marami po tayong alak dyan, please. Kahit magdamag kayong mag-alak, uminom kayo. Bakit? Kasi part of the syntax, ginagamit po sa kalusugan natin. Kaya, Double hat, ano po? Now, since 2014, nakipartner na po kami sa DOST PCHRD. And uh, actually, we have very good and quality 
circulars na ginagamit po natin. 2014 po yan. And we are allotted previously 54 million in research to partner with DOST. Pero ngayon po, uh, because of the pandemic, of course, bumaba siya ng 40.5. Though, it is a lot of money pa rin for research. On the background, bumaba lang yung D, pero on the background, we have the governing policy on field health research engagement, which was established in 2014. And we have an annual allocation from the maintenance and other operating expenses. It, actually, it is 2% of the MOOE, which is 54 million. Though, as of now, it is 40.5 uh, 40 million. Developed set of research priorities identified by PhilHealth to generate evidence. Okay? So yung nakikita po natin na benepisyo natin sa mga hospital, yung mga ginagamit po natin, I do hope lahat po ba nakagamit na ng PhilHealth dito? And uh, really, no? Kasi I myself, really nagamit, uh, hindi po ako pala sakiting tao. But the problem with me, I contacted COVID, the, the ano, COVID severe, the Delta type. So I was uh, hospitalized, hospitali uh, hospitalized, confined for 11 days. Actually, before po ako ipasok sa, sa ICU because of difficulty of breathing, Kasi I'm ano eh, may, comorbid, may comorbid condition ako because I'm a severe asthmatic. So before ako may ipasok sa ICU, naibigay na yung gamot. Naghanap po kami yung tosin, tosilo. Yes, so actually it's about 26,000. Pero during that time, nagkaubusan. So we've gone to black market, which is 95,000. Ayun po yung bumuhay sa akin. And that is PhilHealth. Actually, no balance billing. Wala po akong binayaran. Kaya minura po ako ng hospital kasi wala siya natanggap for more than 500,000 na bill ko. So, background. So, ito po. So, it started 2014. We've begun researches to have a quality circulars. Support, we have the field health studies, okay? Studies supporting the trust for UHC through data information knowledge exchange systems. We are now in the universal healthcare. So far, sino po nakakaalam ng universal healthcare? Yon alam, na, alam ni ma'am. Sige nga, tanong ko ma'am, ano yung UHC? <laughs> Alam niyo ma, matanong ako. Pasensya na. As I came from regions, matanong ako. Ano po ang UHC? Kita mo, akala ko alam niya. <laughs> ana, ana? Common knowledge. Covered all. Universal healthcare. Actually, marami po siya. It's a, ano, universal healthcare cannot just be done in one year. Continuous po siya, continuous realization within 10 years. Though it should be, it was signed uh, uh, February 20 of 2019 and it was implemented November uh, 2019, uh, 2019. Though nagkaroon tayo ng setback, kaya napaurong ng two years because of the pandemic. Universal healthcare is a dream of every Filipino. For which, pag pumasok ka, sabi nga ni ma'am, there's a possibility na later on, you will not pay anything. And another one, iti-change natin yung mind natin na we will not go directly to the hospitals. We will go to the primary care units. Ayun po yung kasi nagiging problema natin. We go to the hospital, gagasta tayo 10,000 minimum just for 24 hours confinement with medicines, laboratories, 10,000 pinakamababa na for a level 1 facility. But if we go to anong mga ano dito, Cardinal Santos, 
faint looks, baka timid, yung 24 hours nyo po, will, you will be paying at least 20,000 pesos pataas. Okay? So, mahirap pong magkasakit. Like what, ano, uh, like what we really wanted na sana pag pumasok tayo, lalabas tayo, wala na tayong gagastayin. So, do, though it's a continuous realization, nahintayin lang po natin. So, kung mang, ang merong nagbago po ngayon is really yung automatic uh, sa confinement po natin. Before, when makoconfine tayo, hinihingan tayo ng monthly contributions. Tinitignan, mayroon ka bang 3 months, mayroon ka bang 6 months, mayroon ka bang 9 months. But now po, pumasok kayo sa hospital, they will not ask that. Dapat. If they do, please tell us. Okay? So we have the objectives of the pill, pill health studies. We have the institution institution institutionalize a culture of research. And that's what we are being, uh, that's what we are doing. Yung mga policies po natin na ginagawa, meron po tayo, like, for example, we have the third party accreditation. Research is being done before the policy is being done. So, ayun po yung mga umpisa. We have other policies na during the implementation, dun po papasok yung research. And we also have policies being implemented in order for the policy to be better for those Filipinos, for us Filipinos, magkakaroon po tayo ng monitoring, evaluation, and research. Para makita natin ano pa ba yung kailangan yan para maidagdag dito. To make it a better policy. Okay? Opera operationalize research results to policy and product development. And of course, we develop clear and efficient procedure and engagement process. So, napakaganda po na ang pulisiya natin from beginning up to the end, it can easily be understood. Though, kung titignan natin, uh, the problem with us Filipinos is that we don't know the circulars. We don't know the policy. So if we go to the facilities, to the hospitals, wala po. Kung ano yung sabi ng hospital, ah, ganun po ba? Okay? If we were given a 10,000 reimbursement, or even 10,000, I, I cannot say discount, eh. 10,000 uh, deduction, thank you sa PhilHealth. But do we know that it should be 25,000? That's the problem with us because we don't know the circulars. But to tell you, the circular is always on the website, www.pillhealth.gov.ph. It is always there. So let's equip ourselves with the policies para pagpasok po natin sa facility, we know it. And we can say to them, ito po dapat. Okay? Pill Health Research Agenda. In 2015, we already have 11 research studies, of course, conducted by uh, PCHRD. 2017, we have eight research studies. 2019, five research studies. And 2021, we have six research studies. So, kung titignan po natin every other year, because yung 40.5 actually tumatalon po siya ng taon. Though, we can get at least 40.5 per year to have this uh, research. So, we are actually, kasi ang research, sabi nga natin kanina, it is not done overnight. It will be done uh, months or even years. Yung kay Doc Galbes nga, da Galbes Tan nga, yung parang huli namin pag-uusap nagre-request kami na hanggang ilang buwan lang. Hanggang ilang buwan lang kasi we really need. Especially, ngayon, meron pa. Another is, one is the TPA, the Third Party Accreditation. We are requesting for it to be done within three months. Pero actually, parang ang hirap. Though, nakipag-usap na lang kami na part of the research at least maibigay sa amin so that we can 
go with the third party accreditation in preparation for the accreditation of the universal healthcare. Okay? Universal healthcare. So dito tayo umiikot ngayon. Universal healthcare or Republic Act 11223. Okay? So if it will be fully realized. Napakaganda po niya. As 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 I read the 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 whole, no, the whole law. Though of course, sabi nga natin, meron tayong mga nabubuo na later on makikita natin kung ano yung pwedeng change niya. Kasi it will na, ano eh, during the conception, and of course, when the time it was done, ito yung tinitignan natin. The group, ito yung group na tinitignan natin. But as it goes by, nag-iiba po yung challenges. As what we have now. 2019, ito po yung naka, nakikita nating future. But the pandemic, but dumating po yung pandemic. And we have a new normal. So of course, there are certain provisions in the universal healthcare that should be changed. So pabalik ho na naman yan sa ating uh, Congress, babalik na naman po yan sa ating Senado. And then, itatali na naman po natin yan. I-momolde natin kung ano yung new normal ngayon. So that is universal healthcare. It is evident in, in, in informed sectoral policy. There is monitoring and evaluation. In order to change the policy later on, we monitor, we evaluate. Health information system. Ayun po yung pinaka dream ng PhilHealth ngayon. For which, if you heard of the consulta, consulta siyong sulit at tama, if uh, nobody knows here, Pwede po tayong pumunta sa mga uh, LGU, uh, owned uh, facilities, rural health units, and we can have our pre-laboratories and medicines. Magpapa-register lang po tayo sa kanila. So, our dream here is to go electronic, for which we register electronically, we will be given uh, an appointment, no? And then we go to the RHU. And then the dream there is going electronic also that we will be giving the pharmacy the medicines that you will be needing and then you will go to the pharmacy and then we, they will give you the medicines. So ayun po yung inaano natin na his Health Information System. So inuumpisahan na po natin yan. And nag-uumpisa na po tayo sa konsulta. Okay? Health Technology Assessment. This is also a group that will, uh, shall we say, um, recommend. HTA recommends policies to pill health. Okay, this will be a group in the universal health care. Evidence-informed decision from research results were translated to policy briefs and notes and the designs of the benefits, products, and enhancements of the program. So now, uh, really, to give uh, the best, no? to give the best benefits to Filipinos, of course, we really need research. That's, that's why we are co collaborating with the PCHRD. Research projects, field health studies, programs produce researches and surveys. So these are some, just some of the policies being implemented by field health, which was done through research. We have the field health support value. Uh, 2015, the field health support value is just 35 pesos per 100 during hospitalization. Now, as of 2022, it, it is 66 pesos per 100 for hospitalization. So, napataas na po natin. But of course, with the universal health care, we wanted it 100%. As what we are now, uh, last 20, I think 20, 2019, we are as to 93%. 
uh, membership. But of course, with the universal healthcare, we are now 100% membership. Of course, bill health share ratio, client satisfaction survey. So, ito po yung pinapadala natin sa ating mga local health insurance offices. And then we are asking questions on their ano, uh, experiences on field health. Benefit package for STEMI. This is the ST elevation myocardial infarction. We have Z benefit package. Z benefit package, actually we have a package here. Ito po yung malalaki natin. Ito po yung mga colorectal CA. We have the uh, breast CA. We have uh, kidney transplantation. So marami po tayo. Yung mga sakit na sabihin natin uh, malalala pero mapapagaling. Okay? Iba po yung malalala na talagang konti na lang po yung percentage to, to live. Ang pinapasok po natin sa Zay Benefit, malalalang sakit na pwede pa pong mapagaling. So, meron po tayong beneficio for that. From the day one of uh, ano, uh, illness curing, up to the evaluation pagkagaling. Sasagutin po yun ng PhilHealth. Mental health package. So this is for 2022-2023. We have rehabilitation package. DRG, global budget. Diagnostic related illnesses po to. Diagnostic related groups. So what we, what we are using now is the case rates from the previous fee-for-service. Fee-for-service, kung titignan natin, ito yung meron kang ceiling ng laboratory, may ceiling ka ng medicine, may ceiling ka ng uh, room and board. So at the end of the day, because you have ceilings, may babayaran ka pa rin. We go to the case rate. Ito naman yung case rates na alam mo na, nagkasakit ka, you have pneumonia moderate, nagkasakit ka, alam mo na kung magkano yung beneficyo mo. It is 16,000. So you can prepare kung may babayaran ka pa ba o wala after confinement. And now, we are going to the DRG o, or diagnosis-related groups. Colorectal cancer screening. Of course, most common ngayon sa Pilipinas, especially on the north side, is the colorectal CA. Why? Bakit po? Dahil po sa mga ano yung tawag doon? Yung uh, uncooked? Kinilaw. Kasi ang mga Ilocano po medyo sanay sa kinilaw. So, one of the of course, one of the causes of the colorectal CA is yung mga kinilaw. Yung mga half-cooked. That's why common din po sa, sa US. Because of half half cook food. Okay? Though, bawal din naman po yung sobra. Kasi yung mga sunog naman po, it contains oxides. So, it, it is also cancer-forming. So, yung mga nag- uh, mahilig po dyan sa barbecue. Masarap yung tostado. Ah, ano? Pero please remind, be reminded yung black, that's oxides. And it, it may help to give you cancer. Okay? Okay. Sabi nga natin, especially what is most common in uh, sabaw na lang. <laughs> what is most common among female? The breast cancer. But of course, kayang-kaya nyo agad malaman kung may problema na o hindi. Paano ba? Anyone here? Who knows? Palpation? Kung minsan nga, sino ba nakakatuklas? Asawa. Yung lalaki. Walang bastusan to ha? Why? Kasi kung minsan naman ang palpation eh. Diba? So you will palpate it from inner to outside. And then, yeah. tignan nyo na lang. There are physiologic lumps, kung tawagin natin. So physiologic lumps, of course, cystic siya at nawawala siya after menstruation. Okay? Pill health share. So through Pill Health Share, searchable data bank of search researches on social health. 
So dito po lahat ng research na pinapagawa ng PhilHealth, dito po pumapasok sa PhilHealth Share. Though it is on the pipeline, na isi-share po namin sa lahat na po yan. So anyone who wanted to know the PhilHealth research agendas, makikita po nila sa PhilHealth Share. But habang hindi pa po tapos yung PhilHealth Share, pinasok po namin siya sa PhilHealth website www.philhealth.gov.ph open it sa title po niya makikita po natin PhilHealth Studies and we can click on it though hindi po nakalagay sa loob lahat doon yung research you can uh, after clicking it you can uh, email us to send you the whole uh, research okay so ito po yung ating PhilHealth share and this is our PhilHealth corporate website www.pilhealth.gov.ph So, actually, that's all. Iiwanan ko po sa inyo itong praise na to. Research is to see what everybody else has seen and to think what nobody else has thought. By Albert Sent Yoyi. And Yoyi also is the one extracted vitamin C. Or, or ascorbic acid from the body. Okay? Another one is the knowledge sharing and collaboration are a key foundation of research and development by Jonathan Espira. So everyone, to, of course, DOHT, uh, PCHRD, happy 15 P PNHRS week. Thank you very much po. Maraming maraming salamat. Thank you very much po, Dr. Arena. Parang it was just right that you were the last speaker because uh, we see a big government agency uh, changing their strategies, processes, etc. based on evidence-based uh, results or from their researches. No? So it's truly like an application. Uh, just shows us the application of research in, you know, in government agencies and, of course, non-government agencies also. So uh, thank you to all our valued research partners, and I hope everyone has learned a lot from all their presentations. So now we will be entertaining questions from our audience. We have Dr. Galvestan, who will be our moderator for the open forum. So I would like to request all our uh, speakers to stay in front. Uh, Dr. Galvestan is uh, requesting that all of you will uh, sit in front no? and all those who would like to clarify or ask questions to just go to some designated uh, microphones uh, in the center and tell us your name it's institutions questions and the resource person you would like to address the questions to so while waiting for the setup uh, I would like to request everyone to for those in the zoom to answer the evaluation form by clicking the link in the chat box or going to the URL or scanning the QR code flashed in the Zoom's screens. For those present, we have like uh, QR codes uh, in your, uh, on your tables which you could also uh, click for the evaluation. And just a reminder that uh, we need these accomplished uh, forms uh, so that we can be able to give you your electronic uh, copy of your certificate of participation. Uh, so just a reminder, please make sure to input your name and email addresses uh, correctly. Well, ito na po, let us now call on our speakers, Dr. Noli and Nilo, Dr. Renato Reyes, Dr. Orina, Ms. Karen Hippol, and Ms. Christine Zamora. I think I may have missed... Uh, yes, again, um... Maganda magdang umaga po po. Siya. And I hope you were truly inspired as I was inspired or I am inspired <laughs> by our speakers. Pero sana hindi lang po kayo inspired. Ano? Talagang kikilos po kayo from here on <laughs> to be able. And um, but we're now in the open forum so we have microphones of course available. Tapos kung nahihiya naman kayo May mga papel din yung program punitin niyo lang susulat din tanong niyo ipasa niyo sa amin. Yes, uh, you know these five people here are so valuable. Uh, Alis na araw sila ng alauna. <laughs> 
So please, uh, unang tanong. Wow! Ang konti natin, mahihain pa rin. <laughs> Alam niya, tuwanto ako di sa lamesang ito kasi puro masisaya. No? Kaya pwede, pwede bang may mauna rito magtanong? Anyone in this Jack and Poy? Yes. <laughs> I'm Henry Pop from Philippine Rice Research Institute. Uh, my question is for Dr. Orina. So, sir, uh, what are the research topics uh, you are funding po through DOST PCHRD? So, I assume ito po ay related dun sa mga diseases uh, associated sa smoking and uh, drinking of alcohol po. Actually, we're not on that kasi pag pag ginamit namin yun, kukonti ang magiging syntax namin. No? <laughs> uh, more of, ano, of course, we do the, what is, sabihin natin, in. Na? First, if we can see the hemodialysis. Hemodialysis is from zero, uh, from one to 90. But if you can uh, see the news, we've increased it to 144 days because uh, the problem here sa dialysis kasi lumalala nga eh kasi ang mahirap dito even mga bata nagda-dialysis na we have dialysis uh, dialyzed children no? why? because of course it's just nagumpisa lang po yan sa ano sa minor urinary tract infection pinabayaan, nag chronic infection sa kidney, pinabayaan and then, nag-shut down yung kidney. The problem here, we have two kidneys. The kidney on the right can be diseased. Pwedeng patay na siya, pwedeng mamamatay pa lang. Pero hindi natin nalalaman because the other one is still functioning. So, ayun yung misnomer doon. We can say na we have a very good urination. Pero pag nakita natin sa doktor, may problema na pala. If the two kidneys shut down, hemodialysis na. But we advocate the peritoneal dialysis, of course. Hemodialysis, pwede ka magdialysis three times in a week. So kung titignan natin yung 90 sessions, pwede siyang kulang. Hanggang July lang yan because it also includes your confinements. Ito, you will not be just di the, do the dialysis Per session, you will also have confinements for other illnesses, and we all only have 45 days in a year uh, benefit. No? So, kaya tinaasan po natin into 144. So, dun ngayon pumapasok, ito yung research na what happened next. Ito yung after the circular, nagkakaroon tayo ng research in order for us to know ano ba yung pwede sa ating mga pasyente. So, of course, ang lagi nating guinea pig dyan, kanina nga, ang guinea pig is the mice. Sa amin po, tayo po ang guinea pig natin. Para at least makita natin kung ano yung mas makakabuti sa mga Pilipino. So, as to alcohol and, uh, and uh, what do you call this, uh, smoke, of course, yung aftermath po. May vaping oh, po oh. <laughs> Pag nagkaroon ka ng diabetes, we have a, uh, we have a uh, benefits on diabetes. So, dun po tayo. Of course, healthy living is the best. Thank you po. Thank you. Yes, please, uh, questions? Talagang walang nagtataas ang kamay. <laughs> Alam ko dito. Yun, yes, finally. Hindi <laughs> naman finally. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Lou Evangelista from Mariveles Mental Wellness and General Hospital. First, I'd like to thank Sen, uh, Dr. Jimmy because he was very instrumental in having our hospital, Mariveles Mental Hospital, to be renationalized from being devolved. That was in 1995, pero effectivity po noon, January 1st, 1996. Yes, sir, I was the one who went, met you there. And uh, since then, uh, yung aming hospital na developed na. So in 2019, sir, we were given RA, uh, um, RA 11288, 
We are now Maribelis Mental Wellness and General Hospital. So additional 100 bed general hospital. And wellness po, we will be going into complementary and alternative medicine because we hope to be center of wellness for Central Luzon by 2023. So meron, uh, uh, sorry po, advertisement lang po yan sa aming hospital. Pero, uh, marami na po. Our, our general hospital is now being built. Nasa third floor na siya. It, we will have five-story general hospital, 100 bed. But I have a question to uh, Mr. Riña. Uh, tungkol kasi yung kanina kita ko may mga policy. Ano kayo? Merong certain policy ang uh, PhilHealth na affected kaming uh, mga CIU, uh, from, uh, Community Isolation Unit. Kasi po, hindi pa kami accredited dahil custodial psychiatric facility pa lang ang aming LTO for now. So we have the CIU, yun ang PhilHealth accredited namin. Pero may policy po ang PhilHealth na um, persons or patients who are aged below 17 and above 59 cannot be reimbursed pag sila ay na COVID confined. So nagulat po kami mga TTMF at kami mga CIU na ganun. Eh ang dami po namin naging pasyenteng below 17. In fact, Ang youngest po namin ay one year old. No? And yung mga elderly, so yung mga senior citizen, kasi pag above 59. So yun po yung gusto namin malaman. Parang hindi naman ata ang kopyan sa sinasabing universal health care kung ini-exclude natin yung mga age below seven, 17 below and 15 uh, above 59. Thank you po. Oo nga, pwede ba akong umupo na doon? Oh, anyway, katabi mo naman eh. No? Hindi, I, 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 napaka-importante po yung tanong nyo, pero uh, we'd really like to shape the discussion no, dito sa ating research mobilization. So, though, though I can answer that. Ah, sige, uh, quickly, quickly. Uh, ang first question ko, kanino ka kaya galing yung circular na yun? Because it's not actually a circular of pill health. Uh, any, kasi hindi na maalam natin, na everyone can contact uh, COVID. No? 59, 60 years old, actually, mas maraming ang 60 and above who dies of COVID because of the comorbidities. Starting this uh, August 22, meron na po tayong face-to-face -face classes. So very uh, ano, uh, important yan na at least we are helping through the CIUs. Actually, we, we, also, uh, we also have the uh, home isolation. No? Aside from the CIUs, we have home isolation benefits. Though hindi po yung bahay ang ina-accredit natin, no? it is the, the partner facilities. I never read any circular na naglilimit po na 17 and below and 59 pataas. So it can be a misinformation. Or if you can give me that circular, uh, pa-investigahan po namin. But there are no, um, shall we say, limit for confinements or isolation of patients. Ayun lang po. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Sige, dito naman tayo, dito sa lamesang ito na alam ko puro magigiting. Yes, <laughs> yan ang gusto sa inyo eh. Thank you very much. Yes, yes, Doc. My name is Mirasol Domingo, and I'm with the Department of Science and Technology, Davao Region. Um, I'm happy to be here. Not really. Po. Uh, my question would go to Ma'am Karen Hipol. Uh, Ma'am, I'm more interested on in, uh, forming international collaboration for uh, health research. So may we know what's the um, what's the similarity or difference ng Newton Agham program with the um, yung in the pipeline International Science Partnership Fund? Uh -oh, may we know more about it? Um, and yun po, will this be in partnership with PCHRD also? Uh -oh, thank you po, Doc. Gusto po ng mga taga Dabao eh, to be linked with the UK. <laughs> yes, please, Karen, please. Um, so, good morning po, ma'am. Uh, thank you po for your question. I hope you can see me. Parang nahaharang po tayo. Eh. <laughs> uh, 
So first of all, thank you, Paul, for your question, especially that we really want to have uh, researchers also outside of Luzon. Parang, uh, I mean, it's not just ourselves, no, but it's been always an initiative. Now we try to, we would like to reach more areas and involve more institutions. So definitely, if there's an opportunity in your region for more collaboration, we'll be happy um, to support that. Um, in terms of the International Partnership Strategy Fund, I hope I got that right. Um, uh, it will focus on actually three major themes. One of them is global health, and then another one is climate change. And then I forgot what the third one was. It's still in discussion, but I can share for those details. But those are like the three main um, uh, priorities. In terms of global health, definitely, as mentioned, since the Philippines will be a partner, uh, we will be shaping the priority under health with uh, DOSD PCHRD. Um, and uh, again, we will align. Uh, so, hindi po natin pa po sure since the discussions have yet to start. Um, so, uh, just quickly as an overview. So, uh, once it's finalized in the UK, hopefully within this year, uh, we will be discussing with the OSC PCHRD on the partnership opportunities po ulit, And then maybe that's when the calls uh, will be starting po ulit. Um, but in the meantime, habang wala pa po yung international partnerships uh, fund, we're happy naman po to also discuss any other potential partnerships that we can still do under health po. Um, so happy po to have a discussion po later. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Yes, more questions, please. Yes. Hilton, ikaw ba yan? Wow. Yung aking most sought up there. Sir. Hi, good morning po. Um, Hilton Lam uh, with the Metro Manila Health Research and Development Consortium, uh, UP Manila National Institutes of Health. Yung question po is for uh, Ma'am Hipol. Uh, you mentioned the transnational education and the example you gave was with universities. Uh, however, we're seeing that medyo uh, with the COVID situation, nahirapan to get into a degree program. Uh, would the UK be open to uh, certification programs or, uh, or basta hindi degree? Um, I think uh, with the acceptance now no, uh, of digital education, I think that may be good. Thank you. For, uh uh, certification program so there are a lot of universities also institutions that have certification programs in the UK um, I guess it's a question lang din po if they want to do it jointly kasi po as mentioned earlier in transnational education programs it's a joint MS degree for example um, if it's a certification program this will entail uh, in a way less for example a couple of months lang po of training ganyan and I guess we have to justify if the, what do you call this, the admin of doing it jointly will still be feasible and I guess, um, what do you call this, uh, uh, accordingly uh, maximized. Kasi po, for example, for the joint degrees, um, again, if it's a two-year master's program, there are a lot of, we have to match your curriculum with theirs. Po. For example, we have to see the equivalencies and the credits, kung makikredit po ito, for us to have that joint degree together. So for certificates, uh, we can certainly explore that po, I, because it's the first time this was raised to us. But I guess we can uh, see if there's interest on their end. Pero I guess I'm caveating lang po my answer, kasi nga, um, it will entail administrative procedures, eh. And I don't know if it will be, for example, worth it to go through that process for a certificate uh, program. Thank you po. Yes, sige, si Tita mismo. May tanong. <laughs> May tanong lang po ako kay Dr. Nilo sa kay Dr. Renato. No? Uh, because you're talking about collaboration and research capacity building. I, From what I got, the collaborations were from outside. Is there a move to make like a consortium? For example, for mycology study with, diff, with other local universities. And then with biomedical engineering, I heard uh, yesterday that there were only four. Was, is there a move for a consortium? Because I think uh, f with regards to the, the, uh, your mycology study, so UPLB is uh, parang a branch of UP system that is on agriculture. Even UP Mindanao 
and I think there are other agricultural uh, universities. So I just want to know if there's a national consortium for this. Yes, thank you so much for the question. Uh, merong mga existing uh, organizations na that spark collaboration. For example, in mycology, we have the Mycological Society of the Philippines. Meron din tayo where I'm the current president of the Philippine Society of the, for the Study of Nature. Uh, na part lang ito, yung, yung sa mycology, but it's, it's, it's very general. But uh, we are initiating the establishment of the Philippine Society for Mushroom Science and Biotechnology. I uh, really uh, was able to convince the mushroom growers really to uh, group with the scientists para magkaroon ng merging. Ang, ang, ang nangyayari kasi sa atin sa Pinas is magkahiwala ito, unlike in other countries, where the, there is this society where the, the, the businessman as well as the scientists meet. Yun ang kailangan natin, na kailangan mag-usap itong dalawang ito, hindi lang basta mag-usap, kundi magtulungan. So we are initiating this as far as mushroomology is concerned. I mean, the advancement of the Philippine mushroom industry. I'm talking based on on my expertise as well as my immersion with the mushroom industry. Uh, other universities we had, for, for example, with Canadian University, we've initiated the Magic 7 Plus Consortium. This is with, uh, of course, uh, being supervised by Chad, and there are seven universities in the Philippines. We also have, uh, uh, there are different consortia. Uh, for example, one project that we had, which is uh, funded by the Commission, by the European Commission, uh, this is on internationalization of uh, higher education in the Philippines. So it depends on the team. Meron pa yung curriculum development on agroecology. It's also a consortium of different universities in Asia as well as, of course, that includes the Philippines, as well as uh, uh, European universities, as well as one industry or one company in Luxembourg. So merong mga ganitong mga initiatives, ang, which is also, which is good. Uh, to me, I would say it's good because it's thematic and it's more focused. Uh, ang kailangan lang siguro, laging merong communication. Uh, right, thank you for that question. So, ang ano ko lang dito na, with the support of the PCHRD and the consortium that they had established in different regions, I was able to travel in the biomedical devices and healthcare. So, in place na yon. Ang kailangan lang talaga to to shepherd all of this uh, university. So, for example, I mentioned to Dr. Jimmy na uh, for Davao we have the uh, University of Immaculate Conception, and we are already actually there uh, writing a proposal for a visiting expert and all of these things. And we have already uh, uh, writing a proposal on establishing a biomedical uh, center, blah blah blah, and. One thing also happened uh, because we have also, uh, what do you call this, a memorandum of understanding with foreign universities like University of Auckland. One of the very talented, summa cum laude in one of the engineering course. And now we're being uh, helped by IBET to be accepted in the University of Auckland in order to get his uh, PhD in the biomedical engineering. BS to, pero may direct program sila from BS to PhD. So it's a good program. Basahin ko talaga, five years in college and you have an individual thesis. Yun yun. But we have other like University of Strathclyde, Leeds University, na meron din kami mga estudante. So, ang kailangan lang talaga na yung shepherding ba na kasi ang akala nila, ang hirap ng biomedical engineering kasi wala nga sa atin, di ba? Pero, yes, it's hard. Pero kung meron mga expert na we can up, then bring it here, my funding, so what, diba? So, just to have a critical mass on people who knows how to do research in the biomedical, that is very important. Kasi, kung wala talaga, forever ba tayo mag depend sa imported you know, medical device? No way, diba? So, th this is just an uh, initial uh, uh, initiatives na ginagawa namin para we can help all these people. So, Luzon, Visayas, Milano. So, at the university, I mentioned to Doc Jimmy, is the University of San Jose Recoletos. So, we are now building the Recoletos Biomedical Device Innovation Lab. May bagong building sila sa city. 
And these are just initiatives aside from the four universities offering the formal biomedical engineering program as a BS. So, ito yung nangyayari ngayon. Thank, Thank you, Sige. One last question. Pero alam nyo, just to, I hope to encourage again, no, there are only 29, when I say only, to class lunas, laboratories or centers or universities. Um, and I hope every region malang, no? every region must have. Pero ngayon po, managinip na po tayo kasi sabi ka may pay. lab, pero kailangan rin daw ng research lab manager, kailangan din ng mga scientists, so talagang well, I'm giving you three years po, <laughs> sorry, may pera po tayo, no? hindi nagagamit eh, no? talaga please, I hope you, when you get back, no, meet again your core scientists, your core groups, paano ba talaga magkakaroon tayong, kasi yung Kaya I'm so happy that Dr. Nilo is here kasi yung biomedical engineering yung po. No? Now, while we're now only four universities with two more candidates, I hope it can be 10, 12 bioengineering across the country. You know? Yes, last question. Yes, last question po kasi alas 12 na raw. Pinapanon ako. Please introduce again. Thank you for all our resource speakers. And it's, I'm, I'm really sorry. I'm Risa Abilgos Ramos from the Philippine Rice Research Institute. Nakabase po siya sa Nueva Ecija, but we're a national research for development uh, or, uh, corporation. <laughs> yeah, uh, national research agency po tayo. It's not a question, but more of a comment. But uh, I think I, I would like to ask din yung mga experts natin kasi uh, naglalaro lang po sa isip ko kasi the objective of this um, discussion natin is to really strengthen yung national health research system natin. For example po, ang Philarise kasi is more on sa production ang, ang focus, yung yield. But uh, for the past 10 years, we're trying to do some R4D for health and nutrition. Pero yung po, for example, yung aming group ni na the corpus is maliit lang kasi ang focus pa rin nga namin sa pataas yung yield ng rice. But, of course, we cannot just solve any problem like you. Marami po sa inyo nag-emphasize ng, ng proactive uh, effort to to address yung mga tumataas na nating ano, problems on health. Even yung sa mga nutritional problems, wala pa rin tayong hindi pa natin namimit pagkatapos siguro ng 2030 hindi talaga mamimit yung mga SDGs. Yeah, let's let's face it, yun yung realidad. Ah, uh, kasi po parang tingin ko din yung ating katulad nito, iba-iba kayong iba-iba tayo ng ng expertise, but how would we do we go from here dun sa gusto nating objective? Ano yung magiging parang plan of action natin after this forum, for example? Uh, siguro kahit ako uh, I would like to challenge myself na makipag-collaborate talaga. So I'm hoping sana pagkatapos or hindi tayo matatapos dito but yung unang nakita ko, paano ba ako makikipag-network sa kabilang table? O kasi I don't have time now na makipag- ano, ang nakakausap ko lang si ma'am na pareho pala bikulana. So ganun. So sana may time po tayo after this open forum to, to really do the networking the, para maka, magkaroon tayo ng meaningful collaboration and we can really complement yung each other sa mga research for development na mag, mag impact on people. Thank you. Remember, uh, of course, we're only launching, uh, bukas yung simula ng Philippine National Health Research System natin. So there's many more uh, to meet people. Pero yes, comments lang from uh, our professor from the Philippine Rice Research. Kung merong idadagay lang po tayo. Pati sa her din. I'll do the suggestion first. No? Uh, what good thing happened on the pandemic is the virtual communication. No? 
it's not just face to face. Biro mo, we can do the MS Teams, the Zoom, and the dami pa. At through that, kasi feel health, usually we have a monthly collaboration, we have monthly talks with Japan, JLN, and other countries. World Bank, we have the DBM. So, through those uh, communication, collaboration, meeting, exchanges of ideas. So, kaya rin tayo nakaka-develop ng magandang policy. So, I do suggest kasi previously, actually, Thailand, Vietnam, pumupunta yan dito para mag-aral ng research on rice. I think we go back to what was before. We strengthen in and become another tiger in the ano in Asia. Thank you. Uh, Ma'am, I like what you have said kasi para sa akin that's the right thing to say sa discussion na to. I have to challenge myself. Kasi eh uh, naman sa pagmamalaki. Uh, we have we've been trained sa specialty ko, sa expertise ko and we offer our expertise to other people. I've been a RD lead, I've been a no so ano, pero it's just sad and unfortunate na kapag ano na natin, parang, sir, sorry, hindi ako makabing sa meeting kasi ang dami, we are wearing different hats in our university. Sir, huwag mo sabihin sa taas, ang dami pinapagawa sa akin. So, hindi ko kita talaga maano. So, di ba? So, it's a matter of choice. Di ba? So, I, I, I really like. So, kung tayo ay ganun, then that's the way to do it. To start. Kasi kung, ay, may ano ako. So, uh, other thing that I also observe working with, hindi naman pinaliit ko, pero that's the reality na isasabihin ko. Na, these universities na nabit sila ko sa, ano, sa mga regions, they really laid back. Mag-email lang, it takes a week to answer. Ano ba yan? Di ba? Punta ka dito sa Metro Manila. Lahat, kung hindi ka answer sa email, may, may ano ka agad, may, may FB na ka agad. O, nag-email ako sa'yo, sagutin mo. Di ba? So, what I'm saying is a matter of choice. If you like to do it, then do it. Kung hindi, o, oh, hagang kailan. Kasi sa, sa dami na, na, why I have to say this? Because, dami namin na-achieve because we want to change or we want to contribute the change, especially in the biomedical devices kasi that's what we need. Ngayon na, pabalik ako kaagad pagkatapos ng lunch kasi we have a meeting with the the UK partners. May bago kami project through our initiative. Hindi <laughs> alam makatulungan ng British Council. Yung, ano, uh, funded by UKRI, pero National Institute for Health Research. And this is a big, big amount for five years. So, Luzon, Visayas, Mindanao yan. So, marami na kami mga nagawa na parang mga meeting-meeting with all the consortium, all the professional org. Pero ito yun, na hindi pwede kasi nandito ngayon tayo sa ano, ang UK, marin dito. Hindi! You have to decide kung i-continue ba o hindi. So, we go through it. Di ba? So, it's a matter of decision or choice. So, kung gusto mo talaga yung bisahan, bisahan mo, no matter what. Thank you. Thank you. Sige, Dr. Renato. Yes, uh, mag-react lang ako doon sa, of course, yung comment mo and question at saka yung question mo, ma'am, kanina. Ang ano ko lang is suggestion, bale, yung reaction ko is suggestion, siguro yung sa PCHRD can, you know, initiate yung networking. I also believe in, the, in networking as a tool in order to at least, so that we can go farther. Uh, halimbawa, even sir, yung mga Tuklas Luna Centers, bagamat may kanya-kanya kaming mga uh, specialization. Halimbawa, CLSU is mushroom, yung isa sa Mindanao ay fern, yung isa ay sa ano. But can we can come up with a product or whatever output of research na product of collaboration? Uh, siguro kung ang PCHRD can really come up with a workshop, kum networking, para magkwentuhan, hindi magkompetensyahan. No, hindi. hindi yung paper presentation na pipiliin kung sino ang magaling. Ang, ang, ang lagi kong sinasabi dyan, lahat tayo magaling. No? Lahat tayo magaling in our own right. But there must be that platform where we can actually do networking. Yung pala, alimbawa, gusto ko, nagsasalita ka ma'am kanina, 
pumasok agad sa isip ko, bakit hindi tayo mag-produce ng Mikey rice? Mikey is mushroom, rice is rice. Now, low ang high glycemic index niya, tapos sasamahan mo ng mushroom na mayroong candidate, candidate mushroom na mayroong anti-diabetic. Baka makapag-produce tayo ng Mikey rice. Yung mga ganun mga ideas that, uh, you know, we can nurture, and of course, we have to do research to come up with a product or whatever. And this is through the initiative of the PCHRD. Tapos mayroon namang iba dyan na nag-work sa ganito. Tapos kayo sa, sa Maribela, sa Limbao, well-being, mental health. So, kailangan kasi maging comprehensive at complementary. Yun ang ano ko doon. So, I go with you na kailangan talaga nating mag-establish ng networks. Kasi mahirap magpakilala eh. Yung alam mo yun, lalo na dito sa atin, nakalat-kalat tayo, ibig sabihin kanya-kanyang isla, ang hirap mag-connect. Pero kung merong platform, common platform where we can communicate, and this can be initiated by PCHRD, lahat ng Tuklas Luna Centers or any interested parties can sit down, and then magkwentuhan lang. You know, sa kwentuhan kasi lumalabas yung mga ideas. Okay, it's not basically through paper presentation na nagpapagalingan uh, sa ganda yes, ng paper. Yeah. Mas maganda yung mas yeah. casual, mas less formal. Yun lang ang ano ko doon. Yeah. Yes, Karen, Sarah, of course. Sige, hello po. Um, so I guess not to repeat any more what's been said. <laughs> Hirap, no? Buti lang ako yung last. <laughs> Second to the last lang. Just kidding. So I thought of three things lang. Um, first really is ambition. Uh, I think ambition. So we, of course, have our own organizational um, outcomes and what we want to achieve. Pero we really have to dream big po kasi and I guess long term, um, not just for this year or for next year, pero really in the same way that SDGs are until 2030. Diba po? I think it, we, we, we can practice to try to do more long term planning and long term um, yung nga, visualization. Para that way, we're all geared towards that particular goal. Hindi lang yung nakakat-kat pag nagbagi admin, bago na naman yung gagawin natin. And I guess related to that ambition is therefore managing stakeholders um, across um, organizations and upwards. Minsan kasi tayo, we also have our own ideas, but we need the buy-in of um, our stakeholders or our principals. And sila, siguro mag na sila, so hindi na sila masyadong ambitious. <laughs> Wala na sila sa 2030, di ba? <laughs> Pero yun nga eh, parang, but they're the ones um, in the decision-making positions at this point in time. So uh, along with the ambition, we have to manage up um, and try to sell also our ideas within, within our own organizations because someone really has to champion them. Um, otherwise, it might not really um, have that hard footing or foundation to continue uh, moving forwards. And I guess my last comment on this is to lessen the bureaucracy. May hilig po kasi tayo sa bureaucracy, sa totoo lang. Um, but, and I know, and I understand that they're there supposedly as checks and balances. Alam niyo po yun, parang mag-timing timeout ka kasi baka lalakwat siya ka lang. <laughs> Papasok ka pa sa office para lang mag-timeout. Di ba po? We have those kinds of rules na sometimes you understand why they're there, but they kind of, they're very limiting. Um, I understand that that's our way sometimes, again, for checks and balances. But if there are ways for trust and flexibility, but still accountability, um, yun po, sana we can try to figure out how we can lessen the bureaucracy because they're very, very discouraging. Um, I remember there was an anecdote na they want to partner, for example, with this state university. Kaso lahat yun dadad pa sa Board of Regents. Lahat yun, paper man pa, lahat yun. Ay, ang dami pong kakausapin. So, syempre, nadi-discourage po yung potential partner kasi instead of just talking to one person who can at least um, champion that or manage that decision, ang dami po pong iikot pa po yung papel <laughs> tapos pagbalik po ng papel sa inyo. Um, the opportunity isn't as, you know, attractive anymore. So, again, we want to lessen the bureaucracy but still maintain that accountability for each one. So, I hope there are ways to figure that out. Yun. Thank you po. Thank you so much. Yes, Christine. Hello. Good, good afternoon po. Indeed, that is the heart and soul of the Philippine National Health Research System po eh. This is the platform that we work together, collaborate. So we... No, si Sir Doc Henry. Hello po. <laughs> Um, to be ano po, active in the Central Luzon Research and Development Consortium. Kasi, and 
take advantage of the opportunities that we, the information, the, the things that they provide. And ito po, we are thankful for this platform, the PNHRS Week Celebration. So ayun po, that's one way, one way that we can, I know, step, uh, go one step at a time siguro. Ayun na po. Great. Wag po, wag po muna aalis sa ating team kasi meron po ang appreciation. Pero just to say po na my concluding remarks po no, talaga. Uh, yes, lahat po, words of wisdom, we need all of those networking, kwentuhan, at talagang ano po yan, no? uh, pero kami po sa resource mob, we will have to call you back, you know, kasi itong, when I talk about three year or even six year master plan, kailangan po may budget po tayo, we are now entitled for four billion, pero may gagasusin ba natin yung four billion next year? Singa, gusto ko madinig. Gagastos yung babuo natin yung 4 billion next year. Batas 5 billion na po sa 2024, ha? tapos 6 billion. <laughs> hindi, talagang kailangan po natin. Pero we, hindi po mangyayari yun no, if we don't. Um, yung words of wisdom nila. <laughs> Christine, Karen, of course, Dr. Renato, Dr. Dina, and Dr. Marina. Na talagang kailangan po natin yun. Ano, ano. Uh, again, sorry po yung aking opening remarks kayo na prosperity cycle po talaga tayo. <laughs> prosperity cycle. But we will call you back, don't worry. Kami po sa resource mob kasi we need. Pero pagbalik nyo po, dalhin nyo na po yung mga kapirahan sa isip nyo. No, no and then, then, I'm serious. Kasi ano po yun, no? pag, pag tinanong ako ng DBM or kausap ko ulit secretary joke naman, Magkano ba yan? Nasaan, nasaan? Wala. Kailangan mapakita ko. So many research labs, so many ganito, so many buildings, so many sites. By the way, please, alagaan natin yung ating STEM grade 11 and 12. No? Ngayon palang isipin na po natin. Imagine grade 11 and 12, that's four years of college, master's, PhD. Planuin na natin kasi may pera. <laughs> And not only locally, pero international nga. No? Yung linkages po natin sa mga masteral programs, PhD, etc. And, and even to sa STEM, no? I'd really like to bring our young scientists outside of the country just to interact with scientists, visit science centers. No? Sana po, ano? in every region, ganyan po. Okay. Again, I'd like to thank our panel. Thank you so much. Palakpakan nung naman tayo. Uh, alam niyo, mahilig ako dun sa organized clapping, di ba? <laughs> Pwede bang sampung bagsak? Wah. Yes, merong, merong hindi marunong magbilang. <laughs> I'm giving back the floor to Tita, who's giving the... Uh, How late lang. Sala, thank you po for, the, for your comment po. What I know is that ResMob, we have uh, workshops to different uh, regions. We have gone to uh, Jensan, Iloilo. And then the last week of July, we had in Metro Manila. And then we had workshops and then parang nagkukumpul-kumpul per table po. So we hope we will have an opportunity like that naman to your, uh, in your region po. Na? So let us now show, we're, uh, we're so happy that we have our valued partners here and uh, as part of our appreciation, we're, uh, we'll be giving our uh, certificate of appreciation and some tokens daw po na mamaya daw po bibigay. I would like to invite Dr. Jimmy again. Uh, and Joan also, who's our main uh, organ our, uh, organizer also from PCHRD, as well as Karen po, we would like to acknowledge them, mga behind the scene. Uh, people who have made this uh, session really fruitful and really efficient, no? Um, Joanne, baka pwedeng uh, with the uh, uh, giving of the certificates, no? Let me just read the first one po. Uh, we're awarding this certificate of appreciation to Dr. Nilo Bugtay, uh, 
for his invaluable contribution as speaker in the session of strengthening the Philippine National Health Research System through resource, resource mobilization during the 15th PNHRS Week celebration held August 10, 2022. Signed po by Dr. Montoya and Dr. Sika. <laughs> Picture po. <laughs> And also the an, a certificate of appreciation to Dr. Renato Reyes, uh, also read as uh, the same as before. And Miss Karen Hippol. Then Miss Christine Dom Dominic Zamora from our Herd Bean Plus partner. And then Dr. Edwin Orinia. <laughs> Lastly, po, to you, Dr. Galvestan, for your invaluable. Uh, contribution po. If we could have like a picture of all of the speakers going like on this time. Thank you very much po to everyone. Don't forget po to ano, don't forget yung evaluation form. Uh, Nagre request po everyone to have a picture together po. Uh, so before that, uh, let us first listen to <laughs> to the chief science research specialist of the PCHRD Research Information, Communication, and Utilization Division, Ms. Ulian C. Garcia, to deliver her closing remarks on behalf of the PCHRD Executive Director, Dr. Jaime C. Montoya. Thank you, Paul, Mom Tita. So to our health researchers, regional health research and development consortia members, stakeholders, our dear guests, Good morning. Good, good afternoon na pala. <laughs> so, on behalf of the Department of Science and Technology, Philippine Council for Health Research and Development, one of the implementing institutions of the PNHRS, thank you for participating in this morning's session entitled, Strengthening the Philippine National Health Research System Through Resource Mobilization. Strengthening health research is the core mission of PCHRD. Through health research, significant discoveries and remarkable improvements in healthcare and public health were established. However, ensuring a sustainable health research environment is no easy task. There is a strong need to identify all possible sources of health research funds, generate collaborations and partnerships, and resource mobilization strategies among concerned stakeholders. We are ho hopeful that this ResMob session served as an avenue of knowledge on the existing health research resources and a means of spearheading the best practices on health research among re your region or institution. I am also hoping that you took advantage of this platform to inform us of the support systems that your institutions need to strengthen its health research and correspondingly have taken note of the available opportunities and resources that you could use to match those needs. Moving forward, we envision a sustainable resource mobilization framework for health research that is grounded on strong partnerships and collaboration.
among stakeholders and is driven by the common goal of doing health research to improve the lives of Filipinos. We thank the PNHRS and the ResMob Committee for their continued support. And of course, I would like to thank everyone for, for taking the time to attend this activity. Marami pong salamat. Thank you, Ms. Garcia. Thank you, Paul. This ends our morning session. Uh, let's have a group picture taking. Uh, okay, Paul. So we'll just uh, arrange the front part of this room. Yung iba po, pwede umakyat po sa stage. Iba, iba po po. Don't forget the evaluation forms. If you don't get your certificate within 10 days, please call the PCHRT representative to be able to uh, to give you the certificate. Sabi nila hanggang 12 noon lang daw yung certificate, yung evaluation forms. Uh, pero past 12 na, so siguro mga hanggang 2, 2 o'clock ang deadline po.
So everyone's invited to have lunch.